Okay, I've just pushed record. Whoa! I, I, it, it's, ha it's happened. It's Hello, the inaugural. Everyone. What are we, Chris? We are two human beings on a interesting planet, flying through the solar system. Some might call us a beautiful accident of thermal dynamics. Thermal dynamics, thermodynamics. Thermo. Um, yeah, here you go. Yes, the thermal because it's a bit warm in here actually, and I haven't even put the heating on. Yeah, it's... I'm trying to basically I'm trying to keep it as long into the year as possible without putting the heating on, and I think I'm I'm doing all right so far. Oh, I was trying to do that, but yeah, I caved. Oh, I'm still I'm still going. Th this is acrylic jumper. It feels horrible to wear, but it is warm <laughs> as hell. So I mean, I, I, this house is very very high ceilingy, drafty. You know. Oh. It holes in so, the walls. Um. This is the first podcast, Freebooters. Is that what we're calling it? We're the Freebooters? Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. yeah. Free, Freebooters. Yeah. I like that. Okay, cool. Uh, yep. And I think that sort of nails what we're trying to do. It's going to be a yeah. um, a sort of a free software, free culture, free boot-in kind of podcast where it's going to be very casual, very low-fi, low-fidelity. We're distinctly not going to put too much effort into this because... One thing I have noticed about podcasts, and people who don't make podcasts don't notice this, is it's more than just like like they end up being so much work, don't they? I and also something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, watching mm -hmm. uh, uh, board game videos on YouTube, is that the the more effort and the more production quality, uh, you know, production value stuff effort they put it. That wasn't a sentence, but you get me. The more effort mm -hmm. they put in along those lines. Um, like like if you, if you draw a graph like the effort growth goes up exponentially and the mm. quality of the video just goes up slightly yes it's really Absolutely. not worth it like when you I, like when you you know particular channels you go back to like their first few videos and the sound quality is a bit shitty and you know the camera's a bit mm. like you know it's a webcam or something but you don't enjoy that video any less than their most recent ones where they're you know thousands of pounds worth of equipment going into it. Yeah. And 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 the work goes up and then the fun goes down. And I've already got a job yeah. so I don't want to do double work really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, um, and I so, just don't want to do work. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. Um and and it, it it's been the case like I you know we've both been on on our fair share of podcasts over the years and and like I found that it's very hard to avoid them being work. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try very hard to avoid work. Um, which is, I suppose, <laughs> kind of like fits in the name a little bit, really. Free, free yes. Yeah, um, yeah. And also, I think um, we're probably going to be, I, like it feels to me from our like chat and setup and all this kind of stuff, that we're going to be kind of like a little bit more like Fediverse based, right? Like that's that feels yeah. like sort yeah, of yeah, like yeah. a natural home for the for the podcast, right? It's, it's like a little bit just us because we're gonna we're gonna be talking about games and TV shows we like and stuff like that. So it's just you know us and what we're into, but mm -hmm. with a with a like a, a backbone, a core of small internet Fediverse, Fossy ish, right? Yep, that's 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 pretty much it. Yeah, uh, if you have any. Um, like comments, feedback, or like I like talking points or questions or anything like that. The best yeah. place to catch us is on the Fediverse itself. Um, I, I'll maybe I'll drop an email down in the in the, the description comment section, whatever the heck it's going to be. And um, but really, if you want to catch us, have a conversation. Just just come up with us on the, join us on the Fediverse. Really, um, it's a fun old place and it, it's a bit more lighter because actually. We can move on to we can move on to the first thing that I've got hastily jotted down on my mm. on my notepad, uh, email right because email is like mm. the the small tech that e everyone uses. But I think now, like even a few people at home have, have sort of probably clocked that actually, to the majority of people in the world, there are really only two email providers: Outlook and Gmail. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it is it um, still a thing, really? I, yeah, so you, you're kind of almost saying email doesn't really exist anymore. We've just got two web apps <laughs> that, yes. that, do, that do, you know, lo, lo, what we get asynchronous long form communication. Um, yeah. I think that's a fair, yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair call. I think I, I said to you earlier that it's emails predominantly become like a, a notification mechanism for corporations and the tax man. <laughs> and the tax man. But, yeah, it's it, like. <laughs> And it's sad because because email, you know, it's one of the first internet protocols, right? And, and this is something that I guess, like, I don't know, would be patronizing, but younger people don't realize that it's not. It's a protocol. It's one of the internet protocols. It's it's not part of the web. It's not, you know, 
Um, it's a very yeah. simple protocol. It's a deeply insecure protocol. You know, the fact that you can just spoof a sender address, you can just yeah. put any sender, and it looks like you, you know. Um, but it's 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 got that benefit that so many of these open protocols had back in the day of just pure like real simplicity and that's its beauty mm. right yes but also tr i mean i i've heard many people rant and rave on the fediverse about the the terrors of setting up your own email server for example mm -hmm. now what like how prohibitive that is 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 like debatable right D do do we like the the idea behind things like email and even like chat as well is, and even the Fediverse itself, it's like you don't you shouldn't re necessarily expect to run your own server, right? One of the benefits yeah. of the sort of the collectivism of it all is that people that know can can run the server for a community of people around it. And I think I that's actually I think that's really important. Yeah, because hmm. I think yes. I think when you, when you get to the nerdier. I, I, I almost want to say like more masculine end of the spectrum. There's this, there's this, you've got to host it yourself kind of mentality, right? Mm. Which I think is off putting to the kind of people who, you know, don't want to, don't know how to, don't, don't, can't afford to. It's, mm. yeah, we absolutely, I, I agree with what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Like the community has to lift and carry it, it, it itself and not everyone's going to be a system admin, nor should they, right? Like I don't expect in society everyone to be a mechanic or everyone to be an electrician or a plumber or anything like that. Well, also, I mean, I'm 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 capable of of running all of these servers, and I have a lot of free time. But I don't want to run an email server and a web server and a you know a, a, a video streaming server and a Mastodon server. Like I don't, I just can't be. I don't want to do that. I'm not interested in that. Right? It's work, yeah. And you know how we feel about work on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's. But also, like uh, I I do hear about people like getting through things like spam filters, you know. Uh, and yeah, a lot of spam cool. filters they're working on the basis of well if it doesn't come from gmail and it doesn't come from outlook is a it's good chance of spam yeah and, yeah. and like i don't oh, know yeah, what i've heard is, is if you're running your own mail server and you get on one of those you know if, if somebody just happens to use your SST, smtp server to send some emails and their scams then you're, you're on a list and it's incredibly yeah. hard to get off that list yeah and and there have been people that have written very interesting blog articles about how these lists should be managed but at the end of the day we live in the world that is not the world that should yep. be right and i mean um, really because internet but sorry because email is such a simple protocol that i mean it was originally for people on unix machines to send to send messages to people on the same network right yeah. this pre-internet it was for we are both users of a particular mainframe and we're sending messages to each other that was what it was for and it has a security model for that <laughs> so yeah. when it's introduced to the internet that is an inadequate security model and mm. all these layers we've been putting on top of it have been fighting that really there should have been an email too that was made for the internet um but as far as I mean, this might be my ignorance but as far as i know that that never you know that that, that was never the case so all of these things we do are fighting against that fact, really. Yeah. And, and also, of course, it, it, like technology, there's like an organic social element to a lot of this technology as well. So there's a, an app that I really love the concept of called Delta Chat, which takes your email and it puts it into a chat format. So like, like WhatsApp, like XMPP, yeah. like, you know, Discord, well, kind of like Discord, you know, like the, the, your, your basic yeah. chat apps. And I think that's a great idea, right? Because anyone with email can, can reply to a message or anything like that. And I have installed it on my phone before and I've tried to use it and it never just ends up clicking. It never ends up taking off. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I like it as a because I think um, lowest common denominator technologies are important because the, mm. you know the mo modern the modern internet in particular the modern web and modern technology in general is has in, in, an incredible cost of entry, right? Yeah. And if we're thinking about people in you know poorer global south countries or just poorer people in you know global north countries, uh, it, it can be prohibitive. So having having yeah something like WhatsApp that just uses email, you know anybody can run email. That's cool. Yeah. That's a good idea. And, you know, just in case, you know, these services ever go down, which, of course, inevitably that, you know, they all will. All of these corporate back yeah. services will at some point fail, probably. Um, yeah. uh, so. That's good. I, I built up that like I had a point and I can't remember it or I don't. I'm not sure. Carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, so, yeah, like, like even the, the, the valiant attempts to try and sort of make bring email into the 21st century haven't worked and if i wanted mm. to be social and, and i think it's because the paradigm has shifted right 
we like email is like writing letters and maybe something like your your chat network is is like a more modern equivalent of of phone calls right like it's it's think the the social expectations have changed and we do have open protocols for for the chat network but the the the, the chat paradigm the you know short message not signing off all that kind of stuff um you know that that's taken over as 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 what we what we chat as really right you you don't you're not going to send an email for fun because it, it it seems it's it's got a formal structure to it right i think i think yeah i think there is kind of in theory there's there's a paradigmatic difference between synchronous communication which chat apps represent and asynchronous communication and you know potentially more long form that email represents right do you think would you say chat is synchronous though i mean it can be if you're having a back by design i mean by design oh right yeah like you see the message immediately you know you know it's 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 intended as a real-time communication thing chat chat is that's kind of that's kind of where i was going i think i think because because any any real time thing can also serve as an asynchronous thing, people just mm-hmm. use. I think if people want want to do what we used to do with email, that w- whatever their preferred service is, you know, Discord or or WhatsApp or um, what's that one for dick pics? Sorry for Peter. Oh, uh, Snapchat, Snapchat, uh, Facebook yeah. messaging. You know, whatever they use, they'll just send their long form messages on that these days. Because why not, really? And you know, why not? <laughs> Yeah, I, I sent uh, I sent my mum a copy and pasted news article on WhatsApp the other day. Yeah, yeah. Because c- c- it's like, you know, like the advertising on news websites is yeah. just absurd. And, and it, you um, know, but in, in, in terms of their design, that would make some more sense on email. But it would, but hmm. we've lost that. I think email's kind of lost the battle, right? Email. I mean, I still like email. I use Muck for email. I, I love I love interacting with email with Muck because it's so it's so comfortable. But yeah. Yeah, got, yeah. I, I spend most of my whenever I'm talking to people, it's it's voice on the internet these days, and you know, voice. chatting on Discord. And also, the thing I actually do quite like about WhatsApp is is the voice notes. Actually, there's there's people I I, I voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and and I find that because it's more personal, you know. And also, yeah. like it's, yeah. it's it, I think it is a. I I think it's a really nice way of communicating voice notes. You can also you can also do it when like while you're doing something else, right? You know, you yeah. You, to write to write a message, you have to stop what you're doing, and whereas if you like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like when I when I go for lunch at work, I'll, I'll often try like I'll go down the park, you know, stretch your legs, feed the ducks, all that kind of stuff. And I can text, and sometimes I do te- text, but like it's a great chance to catch. It's so much easier to catch up on a voice note. Yeah, uh, and it's like having a telephone conversation with other people I know who are also at work, but maybe yeah, uh, yeah, you know yeah. preoccupied with something. It, I've got to say, it's it, it's kind of a shame that um that uh I don't know I don't know what term to use. It's not really FOSS, but you know. Uh, amateurism didn't get there first because like a mechanism mm. for sending voice messages to each other asynchronous voice messages to each other mm. we've got like i yeah. could probably write that do you know what i mean like it's a shame yeah. we didn't get there first years ago yeah but the thing it's is shame, it's a shame that whatsapp is the default for doing that because it's kind of yeah. unnecessary uh, you can do it i think you can do it on snapchat i'm sure there are others that you can do it on you know well. what i mean though it's, it's yeah it, it could have been that could have been a protocol or a or a you know a free service yeah or i think i think this is where the corporate internet web gets the edge on us it's not that it's not on technology it's on spending a lot of money like surveying people and working out what people yeah you know working out people's habits and they can do this off the back of obviously huge data sets and they've got money to do all kinds of research that you know your average FOSS product isn't going to do like I'm sure we've and also just, also just having having the users I think is important like like you know if yeah. I if I if I 10 years ago had launched you know a, a, a program where you can send asynchronous voice messages you know getting it out there is the problem whereas WhatsApp with its millions of users can just go we've added this feature and people will use it because it's handy right yeah and uh, I mean it'd be interesting to see like over the years how like it's quite common for a company to add a feature realize it's not worth it and then withdraw it like yeah, yeah, yeah. with a FOSS thing because there's uh, so much people power involved and because of of how the uh because of how how the sort of the how it works and how people feel towards it the human element as it were it's it you can't just drop you know cut stuff out drop stuff in because it's um you, it's, it's kind, not of, it's kind jobs. of it's cumulative it's like a sedimentary yeah. rock right it just it, you never take anything out yeah, I know. You're yeah. like whenever they want to. Whenever they want to um, 
with you know with the Linux kernel, whenever they want to re- remove support for like some CPU that nobody's used for fifty years, like there's always a huge controversy. Like somebody will be like, yeah. "Oh, I still <laughs> I still use that." Yeah, yeah, like dropping thirty two bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, Debian will be supporting thirty two bit until it, you know when we're on <laughs> when everyone's got a quantum computer in their house or whatever. I mean, the problem the problem is though, like for us, games, right? Yeah. All of the get like you know of all the games that we want to play. What proportion of them were made before, you know? For sure, but like, sure. surely wine can be a translation layer for 32 bit stuff, right? Hang on, can, can 64 bit, yeah, 64 bit wine can run 32 bit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, fair, yeah. So has, has Linux actually conquered that frontier without, with this? Do you need the 32 bit? Like, yeah, no, see, this is where I, I'm not technical enough to understand what I'm talking about. Sorry, mm. we just shut up, what, but. Yeah, although I'll tell you what, right? Like, I, Mac, I know... Mac did it right. Well, Mac did it, and I'm surprised. It caused, it caused, it terrible. caused upset, but I'm surprised yeah. that Mac is still. Because, like, one day, it wasn't even from, like, there wasn't, it wasn't like, because, like, with Macs, you're expected to get a new machine every every couple of years, right? Yeah. And so there's that, like, that natural clean break built in. But Mac didn't do that. They just, like, one day, you did a system upgrade, and suddenly, half, most of your Steam library just stopped working. I got like, a friend, I've got a friend, I got a friend who games on Mac, right? And, uh, uh, we, we some she plays Hades and and we also play Left 4 Dead 2 together, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there's on on the modern on the modern versions of Mac OS you can play uh, Hades and not Left 4 Dead, and on the mm-hmm. older ones you can play Left 4 Dead and not Hades. And there's like a small overlap of like one release where you can play both. Yeah. So she had to go through like quite a rigmarole of downgrading to the one that would play both. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand how Mac, like I understand like this the, this sales appeal about Mac right like yeah. you've got a machine it's a bit nailed down it's a bit of a walled garden but it's it's reliable it's safe you know the the app store stops you from getting weird viruses and stuff like that but I know so many like Macs that struggle on a technical basis that you upgrade and something breaks or um I like hard the thing is it's getting like outside of games does it affect anything. Because like, like Apple have never cared about gaming, right? And well, I, I don't fair, think it affects anything outside of gaming. And I think that's kind of from Mac. I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm glad that somebody did it because we because we do need to drop thirty two bit. Yeah, but they could have done it at a better time or in a better way. Like it was just. I'm not sure know, they. Well, can, I'm not sure because, like, no matter how much warning you give. Like thirty-two bit games aren't gonna like you know like Deus Ex isn't suddenly gonna go yeah we'll release a sixty-four bit version you know what I mean yeah it's it's at some point we've got to we've got to cut that we've got to cut that what's the expression cut cut, cut, the, cut, cord. The, expression. cut the cord yeah yeah cut the umbilical cord yeah uh, I mean I guess but I don't know like I don't I don't know how you do it uh, I see mm. the thing is it, you. I mean, yes, like that is a fair point, right? Like, but sure, I mean, can a compatibility layer do it? Can a virtual machine yeah. do it? Can, yeah, you know, it... compatibility layer, virtual machine, like, a, you know, a sandboxy technology, like, uh, what's it, like, Snap, not Snap, uh, yeah, Snaps and the yeah, other snaps. one. What's the other one? Uh, Flatpak, uh, App Image. Flatpak, yeah, I think they can all do it. Yeah, so. I don't think App Images could because I don't think they run their. No. Actually, I'm not sure Maybe. which could and which couldn't. But, like, you can certainly, that's a way of doing it, right? I did yeah, actually yeah, try it. Yeah. I did try once to. Um, uh, I got rid of 32 bit on my machine and mm-hmm. ran Steam in a flat pack. Um, and that worked. And that worked. You know, that worked. Yeah, that worked for running the 32 bit games and stuff. I, I eventually, flat pack Steam didn't really work well for me. So I, I, I've gone back now. But yeah, it was more, you know, mm-hmm. to see if it worked. For a lot of people, of course, they could use uh, NVIDIA's GeForce Now. And that would just solve the problems. Yeah, there streaming. And there. Yeah, I think streaming is interesting there. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I've, I've sort of, I'm still on GeForce now, and I'm on a very mediocre graphics card that works just the way I like it. I've got everything just the way I like it. It's not the fastest computer that you're going to get, but it, it, everything's nicely compatible with everything I'm running. It's, and uh, I can if I'm, and I don't play many AAA games. Like I, I do try and play open source games as much as I can these days. But you know, every now and then you got that itch to scratch, and <laughs> there are some games like that you can't just that the, the, there there is no fast equivalent. Uh, a lot yeah. of like single player story based games, stuff like that. It, it's it's you know, you, you, and nostalgia trips as well. But GeForce yeah. Now is great for that kind of thing. 
Like it's, it's yeah. you know. Yeah, I think streaming is a good. Uh, speaking of yeah. graphics cards, by the way, during I don't know whether it was related, but during the hot weather, my graphics card uh, went kaput. Um, oh. And you know, graphics cards are ridiculously expensive at the moment. I know I had to replace it, right? So yeah. I had a I had a GTX 1070, which is not like you know not the most recent, but that's a, that's a pretty powerful it's card, bad, right? Yeah, it's a good card. It would run. It ran everything on decent settings. Uh, you know, blah blah blah. And I, I could not afford to, eat, I could not afford, and it, that's a five year old card, something like that. I said, you know, it's a good, good few yeah. years old. I could not afford to replace it with something as powerful. Like yeah. to replace it with something as powerful is like, five, you know, 500 pounds, which I absolutely could not. I was mm. push, I was pushing like 200 was like the absolute maximum I could spend in that. Yeah. So I ended mm. up spending um, 200 pounds on quite a significant downgrade, <laughs> which is, a little bit sad but at the same time it it doesn't you know there's certain games that are fairly graphically intensive that i ran on the, on the 1070 which now run very poorly right yeah but like the majority of what i run is you know indie indie stuff and you know it, it runs fine i'm i'm i kind of had a point with this and again i've, I've meandered but I, I like i it's like that I, it sounds weird but i like that i've got a a, a, a less powerful graphics yeah. card i yeah, think it's sure. sort of it forces you to make do a little bit, and I think making do is good. I totally agree. I like, yeah. I mean, first, of all, like the indie indie space is great. Like it's it's the only place yeah. really where I see innovation that means anything. As well as, of course, like um, you don't get the loot boxes, you don't get the advertising, mm -hmm. you don't get the, the 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 constant like even like one of my favorite series of games, Hitman. They're always bringing out this new add on and this new add on, and this new add on. There's too much yeah, content, yeah, yeah. right? Like the game is yeah. too big. I'm not spending hundreds of hours on this kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's you know you can see where the money spinning is coming into all of this, and and I think that's just just very quickly like that's kind of interesting because the reason the reason games are structured like that now is to like to keep you interested, to keep you coming back, right? Which and there must be a huge proportion of people for whom that works, but for me, and I think it sounds like for you, I just find it tiring. Yeah. Like I just want to come back to this game as and when I feel like coming back to it. I don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't know what it feels like. It feels like some like somewhere between nagging and marketing and advertising and and like an emotional manipulation. Because games, games from big studios, like I mean, they you know they they have people there whose job is to work out how to best uh, psychologically manipulate people into you know, like never stopping playing, right? Especially exactly you know the games as a service kind of games, and that is a deeply unhealthy thing. And it doesn't, yeah. And it feels like it, right? Like that's that's one of the reasons. Like it, it feels less of a game, more of a mm. like a product or like a. It feels like you're just yeah, going through yeah. some core like mechanic, you know. And you, and I think you feel it because I mean they're very good at what they're doing. They are very good at psychologically manipulating, and it's 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 everything. It runs throughout the design. It's the sound design. It's the noises it makes. It's you know the way things animate. You know, it's just drip feeding you dopamine, right? Yeah. Um, but you feel. I think there comes a point where you feel like you're playing the game out of compulsion rather than enjoyment. You're playing exactly. Yeah. I think it's, I, I would compare it to like, this is from my parents' generation, like the soap, they would watch soap operas, right? Yeah. And I swear if yeah. there was ever like a two week period where they couldn't watch the soap opera for some reason, they come back, they didn't care at the less about it. They wouldn't start watching it again. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. It's, it's that you need to escape. <laughs> Yeah, Content. it's a little bit like Lost as well. Like you know, when Lost yeah. started, yeah. it was like, oh, yeah. gripping cliffhanger, gripping cliffhanger, and then you got cliffhanger fatigue. As like yeah, every yeah, episode, yeah. it was a cliffhanger mm -hmm. that wasn't ever really properly resolved, or at least I lost interest in the show before, yeah, yeah. like a whole, like most of. And that is the writers resolved. going, yeah, kind of trying to try trying to refine down too much. Like let's you know just mm. the cliffhangers. People love cliffhangers, and it's like it's a bit like you know that meme, like mm. you tell your mum one time you like eagles. And then yeah. there's a picture of like this, this, this knight on a horse with blazing with eagle, the eagles coming out everywhere kind of thing. It's a little yeah. bit that, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember a kid at school was like, he asked, he said his mum told his mum he liked apple juice, and like then that's like the only thing she bought for like weeks. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I think <clears throat> going back to the the graphics card thing is is you've got to like, especially these times more so than ever, you got to look at what's value for money. And yeah. if you play, like for myself, there maybe is less than half a dozen, much actually like one or two AAA games that I'm interested in playing. That's not worth the graphics card. 
If yeah, it... I I can't even think of the last AAA game I played, but there are there are the odd graphically intensive indie games. Uh, for example, mm. uh, War Tales is very 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 good and quite demanding. Mm. Um, it's not super super demanding, but it's it's mm. it's taxing my current card a little bit. But it's playable. Eastwatch, have you? Is it Eastwatch the the friendly? Yeah, animal yeah, game? Um, yeah. I've not played it, but yeah. I I feel like in order to get the enjoyment out of the game, you do need the graphics up to ultra because it it's very atmospheric storytelling with a very you know you, you need the the soft light and the the whole atmosphere. You know, it's it's a very atm- it, basically it's a not quite a walking simulator, but it's near it, right? Like it's it's fine. It's very mundane level quests because you're you're, you're to get the idea is to get you just immersed in this very soft very wholesome world um that's there are, that, there are certain uh, games where the graphical fidelity is part of the game it is it yes. is yeah. inherent and, and 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 yeah core um yeah for sure but yeah that, that, that there's something i wanted to talk about actually which is i've been i've been leaning okay so mm-hmm. there's a particular kind of game that i really enjoy which is the you, very small team usually one person thing uh, that's made like as a, as a labor of love, right? Mm-hmm. Like they they'd be making this game whether whether one person bought it or zero people bought it or a million people bought it. Like they just they have this game in them that they want to make, right? Yeah. Um, and usually those games have in inverted commas like terrible graphics. Like yeah. you, quite often it's code or art or or you know just very cheaply bought stock art or you know that kind of thing because that's all mm. you know all they can do all they can afford or or they don't care about the graphics and. I've, it's come to the point where I see games with terrible graphics and I'm like, oh, that's going to be a good game. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, if, if your graphics are that bad, like the, the gameplay must be amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I I quite like um, where they've been, like, because I, I quite like a, a visually good looking game, but that doesn't necessarily mean high fidelity, um, super like realistic graphics, but like a, a nice style. So yeah, no, this is. For, I, I know what you're talking about, and I appreciate that too. Like Hades, for example, being an example oh, of that, Hades like it's a perfect gorgeous, example, right? Yeah. But no, I'm like, talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about games. You're talking that about Tales of bad. Hood, right? I, I've got a few. I've got a few examples, right? Um, mm-hmm. These are games. Uh, the, okay, there's, I'll start off with the one I've not actually played. This I really want to play. It. I've watched. I've watched many hours of video of it being played. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a little bit too expensive at the moment. It's called um, uh, Card Survival Tropical Island. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a look at that on Steam, um, <laughs> it's it's quite clearly all all of the all of the assets in the game are drawn by the the one developer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this game is okay. There's, there's three kind of games that I really hate at the moment, and that it's it's crafting, survival, and roguelites. And this is a crafting survival roguelite, right? Mm-hmm. But it looks amazing. It's just card. The UI is card based. Like everything is represented by cards. You're 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 stuck on a tropical island. And you have to survive. And you you interact with the world by just dragging cards onto things. So you have a, a card for a stone, and you drag it onto a palm tree, and you you know you throw the stone at the palm tree, and a coconut falls down, and you know drag the stone onto the coconut, and you crack the coconut open, that kind of thing, right? That um, looks fun, actually. That's it. Lo- it looks it's so deep, and and I think what it does beyond any game I've ever seen is you know you know in game you know because we've played a lot of games and we're programmed. We know how games work, and we know they don't work like real life, right? And when you yeah. see somebody new to games playing a game, they try and do all the things that make sense in real life, but don't work yeah. in games. And and because we know that those things won't work, it's kind of a shame. Like we we we've kind of lost that sense of uh, like immersion, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We, yeah. But this game is is like the exception. Thing, things that would you know, it's not one hundred percent, of course, but things that would make sense in real life, things you want to try in real life, they they make they work in the game. And that's kind of amazing, and it's kind of sad that that is amazing. That's it's hypnotic to watch, and it look yeah yeah. You see what I mean about that? I mean the art. Nobody's going to say that is good art, right? It's not good art, but does it matter? It's clear. Like, yeah, it's clear. I, I, sure. I yeah, appreci- yeah, yeah. appreciate the that it's like you you know exactly what's on the screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, actually, it kind of reminds me a little bit of your city builder game, your Sim Cities, and and such City Skylines, where it's like. 
you can just bulldoze a block of flats to put a road through it, which obviously is something that you could, it would be unfathomable to do in real life. Or, or, or just the <laughs> idea of like, I just want to build a flat there, but I also want to build a road. Because like it assumes that the same people that build the flats build the roads, which obviously is not the case. <laughs> yeah, in, in yeah. Like, um, yeah, like you're some sort of, like not even a dictator, like some sort of like um, civic god. god, you know? <laughs> like <laughs> it's a City planning god, the god of... City yeah. planning god, yeah. God of roundabouts. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, I mean, the absurdism in games is, is interesting, I suppose, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. But no, I, like you I, say, like just to go a little bit like pretentious arty, I, th- I think g- games trying to look good, as in, because I think what what it really is is that this game is not tasteful. It's like the designer doesn't know the rules of design, right? Yeah. But those rules of design, really, they kind of they're, they're kind of bourgeois, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and this is more like folk art. And to tell this game that it's ugly is a little bit like it makes me realize how far mass culture has been gentrified. <laughs> I won't go too far with that, but do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Right? It, it's yeah. kind of nice. It's almost like cottage industry games where, like, they, it's like fuck your bourgeois aesthetics. I'm just drawing this in paint. It's re- yeah, it's rebelling, and you know, yeah. I, I mean, I suppose a little bit about our logo, isn't it? You know, it's exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it, that's it, done more consciously but yeah yes uh, well i mean sort of i mean when i did the little logo in the middle of the flag it's slightly off to the left which almost i deliberately did to annoy me like it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's slightly off to the left but you know what i'm like that was a first attempt done in five minutes yep and that's the point and that's kind of the point and like would it matter like we could send that to a design agency and 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 pay them five thousand pounds to do that logo in a like like would it matter would anybody care would anybody care exactly it's just like and it's it's clear you can you can i was gonna say you could put it on a t-shirt don't, i don't want to put it on a t-shirt i don't want i don't want i don't want this to be the kind of podcast that has t-shirts i hate the no, type of, you know no, no. yeah my favorite my favorite podcasts don't have t-shirts if you want to do if you want to do a t-shirt or any memorabilia just make it yourself. Yeah. You know, just it's just, fine. I In fact, what what to make okay. So our t-shirts will be what, the last food thing that you ate that has like a sticky label, pull the sticky label off and put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, bingo. So we're going to get a lot of Del Monte t-shirts. <laughs> do things even have sticky label labels now? They kind of like Back in the day, a jar of jam had like a sticky label that you could peel off, right? Mm. Now they have like these sticky labels that are like welded to them, and if you peel them off, it just rips it, and the, the glue isn't sticky anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm it's not like sure Granny. You, can, you, you get can... Granny Smith; they still put labels on apples. That's right? true. Yeah, fruit. You get, you get stickers on fruit <laughs> for some reason because you need to know what brand that banana is. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah. Do like do something like that. Like you know, no Patreon, no. What's the other one? Ko-Fi, Loaf, or, <laughs> we don't, or own, we don't uh, even know. Oh, the other, the other, the other kind of T-shirt I'll accept is uh, one made with a Dymo. A Dymo. You know those, you know those printy label things where you turn the dial and get the letter and go. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, but the old ones, not the not the digital ones, the old-fashioned ones. Mm-hmm. Or just get a T-shirt and just draw on it. You can just draw on it. Just be yep. like, I I like boats. Or like I like, because that's what a t-shirt basically is, right? Free, free butter. Yeah, free butter. Yeah, I've got it. Sorry, maybe I, I do want to. I've got, a, I've got a list, a short list of games with in very common terrible graphics that I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. lately, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rip through them. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. So, Error North Chronicles. That's mm-hmm. two ends in Error North. Error North Chronicles mm-hmm. is um, imagine Slay the Spire mechanics. Mm-hmm. But in an open world RPG like Morrowind, oh, um, may, again made by one person. It's got literally thousands of cards, and it gets updated quite frequently. And the updates will usually be like, "I've added eight hundred more cards." <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's absurd. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it the, the, like all the graphics are like stock art pulled from like stock art <laughs> places, and it, it mismatched in styles. But it's it's a really great because I, I really wanted I wanted a card combat game that wasn't roguelike because I'm really sick of roguelikes. I want I mm. want to feel like a, a sense of continual progress. Uh, and it, yeah, it delivered. That's a great game. 
Um, nice. Intergalactic Fishing. Okay. Um, it's another with very rudimentary artwork, which actually has a really nice style to it. This one's a little bit different. Um, and that's kind of what it sounds like. You go fishing and you teleport to lakes on other planets and go fishing. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, low Magic Age. Uh, I, I think this one's. I think this one's Chinese. Um, it's it's the D. So D, whoever makes D and D is it Wizards of the Coast? Like they, they sounds, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they release some of their old rules under a license that allows people to use them freely or something. Right? I've probably got the details of that wrong, but there's something along those lines. And this is a turn-based combaty party RPG again in an open world with no, you know, no, there's no plot or anything. You just go around an open world doing quests and. Uh, uh, grid-based, turn-based combat with, with those rules. Like, it's very d and ish That's really fun. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite game currently, Dead Grid. Dead Grid. This is another, another single-person project, Dead Grid. It's a card-based, turn-based combat zombie survival game. But again, it's not roguelike. It's continuous progress. And this one, Rob, it's not really... The, the art in this one is it's like quite well done, but it looks like 20 years out of date. Yeah. And... There's some choices like um, <laughs> this one. The, this, you combine items in this game to make better, better items, right? Kind of, kind of rudimentary crafting. Um, and when you do that, a little, a little animation of like a dude dressed in combat armor, like hammering away at something, and then the text like clink clunk clunk comes up on screen, and it's, <laughs> it's so like amateurish, but it's so 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 charming. This game oozes charm, but like very amateur charm, like an honest charm. And it's yeah. also a really, a really great game. Um, and that's my list. I, I didn't want to go on and on and on about games, but those, those are four amazing games, all made by single people, I think. Um, and, and with, you know, in, in different ways, unusual graphics. Hmm. Fantastic. Wonderful. I, um, mm. yeah, some of those are really, yeah, look really good. Um, interestingly enough, actually, I've been watching um, a, a, uh, video game streamer on youtube because those are still a thing right because like most video game oh, stream, yeah. uh, players on youtube i know have moved over to twitch which has for um for like people with like small communities that kind of like makes a little bit of sense um but i've been watching a uh a somewhat larger ish youtuber called many a true nerd play through oblivion for the first time the fourth elder scrolls game and it's kind of a phenomena to watch because <laughs> um, they're like discovering for the first time things that I I was discovering when I was a, a teenager. Have, have they, is, is it their first Elder Scrolls game? They play Skyrim. Oh, oh they played Okay, so they got but some. But not Morrowind. Some. Right. Yeah. So they're and going. They, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, going go backwards. And um, he already says that it's like it's better than Skyrim. And I've not actually played yeah. Skyrim because whenever I want to play an Elder Scrolls game, I tend to pick up Oblivion. Yeah, but you never even you never even given Skyrim a pop. I think I've played through the the bit where the dragon comes down, okay. and sets everything okay. on fire, and then yeah. it goes. Okay, go to the place, the main city, or something like that. Like yeah. once you've done the training level, I've I've drifted away from it. Uh, it just doesn't. I don't know what it is exactly, but it hasn't hooked me. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I get that itch to play an Elder Scrolls game, it goes. I go back to Oblivion, or I go back to Morrowind. Yeah, yeah, and for sure. I'm really looking forward to the next Open MW release. Actually, I think I might do some some videos on that. Um, but watching them re rediscover it, and and they've come around, and they say they say that Oblivion is actually better than Skyrim themselves, giving me even less reason to go to, go to Skyrim now. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it is unarguably better than Skyrim. Yeah, I mean, Skyrim is obviously better in terms of like graphical fidelity and you know all that mm. kind of stuff. But it's in every way that counts for a game, it's worse. It just is absolutely absolutely but it's um yeah like it, it is kind of like endearing to watch and it's it's kind of interesting to watch so they're they're about our age you know it, it's um, yeah so they, they i think they play they've played a lot of games in that era and are very fond of games in that era so it's yeah the, right. the sort of the graphics the style of gameplay the style of quests and all that kind of stuff it's going to be somewhat familiar to them uh because it's similar to like your your fallout threes and your fallout new vegas a little bit like they're both uh, Bethesda e games, although New Vegas mm. is of course Obsidian, but um, so yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, and I'm finding that to be like really quite, I don't know, like fascinating and um, really kind of like. No, I, lo I love, I love, yeah. I love watching people discover things that are, you know, games that I hold dear or you know something like that. Like watching somebody experience it for the first time is is so joyous, right? Mm. Absolutely, yeah. So it's um, yeah, I, I'm having a great time with that. 
Um, actually, um, since uh, since we're uh, we're on the subject of games, do you want to talk about Stadia because it's it's no longer with us? Yeah, well, it's, it's it's on the on the way out. Yeah, uh, what a surprise! Who's surprised. <laughs> Um, it's. A, I said a little. we talked. Uh, we talked about Stadia a lot, like round about yeah. its launch, right? Because we all we all tried it. You, I think you took to it quite a lot. I yeah. liked it, but didn't really have a reason to use it. But uh-huh. what I said at the time is, Google are not doing any of the things that you would do if you wanted this to be a success. Like, yeah. and I, I compared it to Epic, right? Epic, you know, um, bribing a bunch of developers to be exclusive on their platform, giving a lot of games away for free. Those are the kind of things you would do if you want something to take hold, right? Um, exactly. Their choice to not do, I think they should have done like a Game Pass kind of thing where you pay a, mm-hmm. pay a subscription and you get access to, you know, this catalog of 200 games or whatever. Don't yeah. understand why they didn't do that. Don't understand why they didn't do freebies and deep sales and stuff. They didn't do any of that. So, of course, there, there nobody really had a year of that to towards the end. Uh, not, not as much as there needed to be. Uh, I think one of the big jumping, the big hurdles... I mean, there there are so many things they did wrong because I think as an actual service itself was was great, and I think it had the potential to to be so much more than it was. But mm. the fact that just to sign up, I I actually went through on a separate account, signed up for a whole new Stadia account to see what the sign up process was because I got on board so early that it yeah, it, yeah. it was different. So I wanted to see what what's it like if I was to recommend it to someone today, uh, and what you have to do or what you had to do was sign up for the trial for the pro account for a month and then cancel it. Oh, no. It was There were so many like unnecessary steps to actually get to you yeah. playing a game that I could easily see people just not bothering, you know. Um, it was it, what, what they should have done. You go to stadio.com and it goes, are you new here? Just pick a game and throw you in it for, a, I don't know, like a couple of hours yeah. trial just to be like, you know, Absolutely. try it out. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You know, um, that that would have been. A if start. you do like it, if you sign up, pick one of these five games for free. Yeah, yeah, and like have a couple of free, you know, just have a couple of freebies that maybe you don't even need to sign up to Google for. Just like, yeah, 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 like YouTube. Make it the YouTube of games. Make it so yeah. that you just, you know, you, how you can watch a YouTube video without signing into YouTube. Play a Stadia game. Oh god, imagine, imagine the YouTube of games like being like itch. Do you know what I mean? Like indie developers just throw their games on there and you can try them all out. Like just like an arcade of like hundreds of free games from indie developers you can give a go. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, Google have the money and the infrastructure to do that. And yeah, and, and I don't like that. How, how long did they run YouTube as, as a loss leader? Decade. Well, yeah. not decade, but like years. Yeah. Is um, it profit? I mean, do we know that it's profitable now? I know Twitter I, isn't, is it? Twitter never became profitable. No, no it's not I, I think think it, it, it I'd, oh, well, I'll google, uh, oh google it yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, this might it might give me biased biased results in this case but it's YouTube, uh, profit. google any good google yeah uh, youtube has uh, reported more than a 30 percent revenue growth in the past four years it's generated 28.8 billion in 2021 oh. a 46 percent increase on 2020 figures so was... imagine right imagine if that were nationalized and all that went to the people who make the videos yeah that's quite that's quite yeah so it's uh i think i mean that's a big jump in profits actually what are they doing are they just hammering the adverts more because youtube to me it doesn't does seem that, like does that growing. does it coincide maybe when with when they offered the thing where you can pay to not be advertised to? no i think that's that was early no okay and i don't think that many people pick picked it up really i think they're, they're keeping that as a bit of an I, thing i i hear i hear more than you would think and then they probably don't need that many like give, you know because the number of youtube users is insane right if you get one percent of that that's probably an absolute megaton of money yeah um i mean if i didn't have ad block i would probably pay for it so i yeah. i occasionally because i sometimes I, I i alternate between using firefox and cute browser right i really like cute browser but the thing that stops me using cute browser is the videos on youtube specifically honestly uh, sorry the adverts on, on on youtube specifically because um anyway it doesn't matter why um and you can get around that by watching the videos with MPV, which you can launch kind of seamlessly and stuff like that but like you know sometimes you just want to like click on a video and watch it in your browser right yeah uh, 
uh, yeah, so the, there's no the the kind of ad blocking that is necessary to block ads. It doesn't block video ads. Doesn't exist in cute browser. And every now and then it will pop up that like, do you want a free trial of whatever they call their thing where you don't get ads? And I'm so tempted to click it, but I know if I click it, like it's got to be so hard to go back on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. one, then that's why they do it, of course. Um, so yeah, I've always resisted clicking it. Um, mm. I would never, and and it's kind of odd, like how much I resent. Because YouTube is an amazing service. Like, honestly, YouTube is kind of phenomenal. Like, you yeah. can anybody can upload videos of any length. You know, I assume there's an upper yeah. limit, but reasonably any length. And anybody in the world, you know, assuming your country allows it, anybody in the world can watch that video. That yeah. is kind of phenomenal. I should have more love for it than I do, but I, I don't. I kind of, I kind of, if they ask for me for money, I, I resent that. It's like, no, <laughs> because you're an incredibly wealthy corporation, right? Well, yeah, I mean, 28, 28.8 billion in 2021. Yeah. You know, if, if I was watching PeerTube and they were like, you know, can you drop as a fiver? Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll help out. Yeah. But like, you should know. <laughs> I don't care what you're giving me for free. No, they're making up. They're making. They're making lots of money. I yeah, like yeah. I, I think part well, of the, the thing magic is not, of YouTube my point is, is that like they're not making money from me because I'm I'm neither signing up nor watching the ads. Right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. But do you feel that it's like it doesn't feel like it's growing though? It feels like particularly with a lot of stuff like um, and, and I I might be wrong on the figures on this one, but I'm so I'm, I'm literally only going from a like a feeling from like you know what what people make reference to and all this kind of stuff in popular media but like twitch seems to be getting the edge on the streaming and and tiktok seems to be getting the edge on the the, the vlogging slice of life type of stuff um i think yeah i think i think that's i think that's a little bit your bubble i think i think there's there's a kind of video that doesn't make sense either on tiktok or twitch and that's still yes. on youtube i mean there's there's i i i spend like too much time watching youtube right? me too me too for sure uh, um but it feels yeah, like, no, I, don't know, I, like I, I think I it's feel, being nibbled away at, but I think it's yeah. still, it's still, you know, if you want to upload, you know, medium or long videos, you, you're not, it's, it's still the only option, really. You know, at, yeah. for, for normal people, it's the only option. For sure, for sure. I, but also there's a part of me that feels a little bit um, like it's of our generation, not it's sort of like, I, I, are Zoomers going to be as into YouTube as we are? I, I honestly, I think so. Yeah, um, I, I know what you mean, and that's definitely the case with um, with Facebook, right? Which isn't yeah. even our generation; it's almost our parents' generation, right? Pretty even much, me, yeah. who's old, older than you. Um, uh, Twitter, I think. To an, I think Twitter is probably it's the case for Twitter for for the Zoomers, right? Um, Do you mean but no? I think YouTube. Sorry. Would you say I would say Twitter's maybe a little more millennial than Zoomers? No, I'm saying I'm saying I can't see the Zoomers using Twitter like long term. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think YouTube. Yeah, I mean, just you know, like gaming videos and 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 I, I don't know what there is on YouTube. I don't know what the young people watch, <laughs> but I, I think YouTube is, is is basically not not like directly, of course, but it's essentially television. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is it, the, it, the default. It feels like television for sure. Um, dude, I mean, how do you feel about like, where do you think podcasts are going? Do you think podcasts are, are of our generation? Or do you think they're, they're going to be cross generation? I think I think podcasts are I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day. I think pod, podcasts are huge, right? Yeah. Um, but but because it's interesting, because there's no corporation that does, you know, that has taken over mm -hmm. podcasts, and, and made it, you know, a named product. You don't hear about them much. You hear about a particular podcast, you know, in various places, but you don't hear about, you know, in the, in the way that you hear about YouTube or, you know, Twitch is streaming, YouTube is video yeah. content, Twitter is whatever that is. Um, there's no place that is podcasts. They're still, they're, they're something, they, they're a bit like the old internet, right? They're just something mm -hmm. that people do and put out there and other people listen to. And there's no, there's, there's no middleman. And I, I know you can host your podcast on iTunes and they I think they've collected or captured a lot of that podcast listening, but mm. I think those, those podcasts could detach themselves from iTunes, you know, overnight, which isn't the case of these other services. So yeah, I don't think any corporation has managed to capture podcasts and that's kind of great. And mm. I think they, they, I think they are almost, I think because what I'm rambling away at trying to get at is, mm. you know, Netflix owns, you know, TV, well, less so than you used to, but TV and movies, right? So, um, you you hear about 
how many, you know, how many users, how many hours. You don't hear about that with podcasts. We don't know how many you know, we do from other mechanisms, but it's a massive, massive audience. I think they're almost like the default form of um, of entertainment. You know, if somebody's got a car journey, it's it's either music or podcasts, right? Yeah. Or you know, if you've got a lazy afternoon while you're playing a game, it's it's podcasts. I, I think <laughs> it was, that was really rambly, but I think podcasts are absolutely huge, but we just don't hear about it. Yeah, because because you can't put it into easily into a chart, or you know, and, and mm. yeah, I and also like for example with with what we're doing here, like if you wanted to share this podcast, you could probably download it and just like shoot it into a WhatsApp message to someone. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I kind of like that's one of the the sort of the reasons why I I I like the idea of opting for it to be an audio podcast in yeah. so far that like it, I I like the idea of yeah like people could literally just download it and save it or people could yeah. give you know like give it away share. You know what I mean it about and, it? It feeling it feeling more like old internet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um. Yeah, like, like, and I think uh, it, literally hundreds of thousands of people just making radio shows for each other. There's something kind of like charming about that. Yeah, because I think I, I romanticize a little bit of shortwave radio. I know that shortwave radio is rubbish, but <laughs> uh, and it's it's like it was, it was weird. Was what was great about it, right? Yeah, and I mean it's still a thing, but yeah, like it's not accessible to listen to, and it's not accessible to make content for. Yeah. I, I like that it exists in a th theoretically, but in reality, if you wanted a indie type of technology that was accessible, just make an MP3. Even yep. the uh, like audio editing software Audacity, like you know, free, open source, and accessible to everyone, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of times when I watch streamers on on Twitch who have nothing to do with the free software world, I'll see the little Audacity logo in their uh, in their taskbar. You know, it's it's yeah, oh yeah, no, for sure, yeah, yeah, pieces, yeah, pieces yeah. Of even, even the pro, like the, you know, the big, the big, huge podcasts, yeah, yeah. And I would say, like, it, like anybody, not not quite anybody, but if you've got a, even a, like a, a rubbish laptop, if it's got yeah. a microphone, you can make a podcast. And yeah. don't 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 be don't buy into this thing that you need like pro grade like microphones and stuff. I undoubtedly people will complain about your audio quality, but that's just a thing people seem to like doing. You're perfect. Yeah. You you're understandable, and that's all that matters. If I can listen to you and understand what you're saying, and you're saying something interesting, I'm going to listen, and it's great. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. And and good enough is good enough, really. Right. Like as long as it's not grating. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, you don't want like in the background or anything like that. But as yeah, long as it's you know yeah. fairly clean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want, and, you don't want somebody squeaky, squeaky ass chair in the background. It'd be <laughs> awful. Yeah, and uh, I mean, like you know, one one of the goals we're going for is like the whole low fidelity thing. Um, yeah, it's like go, going back to what we were talking about with Max. Like I was thinking the other day, Max are everything I dislike about the computer world, right? <laughs> I like I, I'm not having like a go at people that use Max. Use whatever you want is you know I, I don't care. But but like to me, like the reason I'm in free free software and Linux and all that kind of stuff was because when I started out on my computer journey, when I got given my first computer that was mine, like my first computer was like a family computer that we all shared and all that kind of stuff. But when I went to university. Uh, I got given a secondhand laptop and I was like, oh, this is great. This is like my first, my computer. And um, I couldn't afford a Windows license. So I was le legitimately just thrown into <laughs> Linux. I had to learn Linux. I knew it existed. I played with it before, but I, I was like, I can't realistically, I'm, I'm about to start a new life in a different city. I need every penny I can. Yeah, I, I'm going to go in and, and, and I've always wanted to learn Linux. So this was like, you know, Just out of interest, a... why did you not why did you not pirate Windows? Which is, you know, what everybody did back then. Because I always felt, and the same reason I don't like pirate uh, Photoshop or anything like that, is I always mm -hmm. felt like there was gonna be a time when that option was cut off and all of the skills yeah, I mean, I've learned had disappeared. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, give, give and us it yeah. Might very well be the case now. I don't I don't know like because Windows seems to be this always online thing, which is kind of the reason I don't think I'll ever ever go back to it now, is because I don't like the idea of my of an on, always online operating system. I, I there are many many reasons why at this point I would never ever 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 go back to Windows. Like, yeah, never. I I just could not. 
It's if it, no, if it was if it was a choice between Windows or a Commodore sixty four, I'm on the Commodore sixty four. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if I think I think that's almost true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like if 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 Linux went away tomorrow and I couldn't make a BSD or a Haiku or something like that work, I just wouldn't be interested in computers anymore. Like yeah, yeah because think, to me, yeah. so, things like like non free software to me that they're, they're products right like it might as well be a toaster or something like that. It's, it's something that a yeah. corporation has made and has sold to me i have no say in its creation i have no nothing i have no or to, like or, well, i will say i know i know you i think you hate max more far more than i do like I, mm. I would never buy one myself just because they're so expensive for the hardware right mm. like you can get a much better uh, non mac laptop for the same money or mm. A, a good one for less money um but if if my cho- if i wasn't paying and my choice was a windows laptop or a, or a macbook I, without a shadow of a doubt the macbook because well you know, everything you say is right but underneath all that it is unix and i like unix or posix compliant you know i mean it's, it's literally unix it's certified yeah. unix which linux isn't <laughs> yeah well yeah um, you know, I, I I can ignore all the Apple stuff. I can run Vim. You know, I can run all the things, all the terminally things I want to run. I, you can even replace the window. You can use Linux window managers if you want to. Um, I don't I don't know if I'd bother with that or just you know use it. I would I would treat it more as an appliance if I didn't you know if I didn't have Linux, a computer would as you say just be an appliance to me, and I'd use it as yeah. such. I wouldn't it wouldn't be a thing to play with as much. Um, but yeah, I'd I'd, I'd be mm. fine. I'd be fine on a Mac because because it's you know as I say because it's Unix and I can use all the things I like using. Yeah, I, well, the, but also the thing with with Macs is that they're, they're prohibitively expensive to me. Like that, yes, that, that to me, yeah. like for me, that's like, <laughs> yeah. Then that you can't you can't. They're not designed to be customizable. They're incredibly expensive. Um, Although again, I'm gonna. This is a little bit devil's advocate rather than something I firmly believe. But again, I've got a friend. Uh, she has a, a MacBook that was secondhand when she got it. So, which mm-hmm. puts it, I think, probably cheaper than a Windows laptop at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's incredibly old now, and mm-hmm. I think if you compared that to a, uh, you know, a non-Mac laptop, I, don't, I want to avoid saying a Windows laptop because there's no such thing as a Windows laptop, right? Mm. <laughs> it's just laptops. Um, uh, if you compare it to a uh, you know Windows laptop of the same age, it's mm. far more capable, for sure. But I kind of feel that like Mac have a they they like to control their their stuff, right? They like mm. they like their walled gardens, they like their, their 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 own little paradigms, and even that you know situation because I know people as well who who were in that very similar situation. They get secondhand uh, Macs, um, or the the idea that like it's you're you're supposed to use it a certain way right you're mm. supposed to update every so often you're supposed to take it to the mac genius store to get it fixed right <laughs> like you know you're not supposed to do so many things with it uh b- yeah. lest it void warranty and it just feels like sure we can we can talk about the the technical aspects of it we can talk about the the fact that their ui probably doesn't have adverts like windows does and all this yeah. kind of stuff but it does kind of feel like Macs just they're not designed for people like me, right? That like I'm like I feel like an unwelcome guest in the Mac house. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Uh maybe you're actually a maybe a, you're, you're a squatter. Yes, yes. Like I'm I'm not <laughs> like I'm like a, a like a, a a working class person at a hoity toity fancy dinner. Do you know what I mean? Like Yeah. Like yeah, like, yeah. like the Titanic. How about, right? like, you... I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio. But maybe a little bit more handsome and less of a perv. Uh, in the how, about, like, how would you feel about like a secondhand MacBook running Linux? I'm fine. Like the actual hardware yeah. itself. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I like. I actually like Mac keyboards. The little flat. They're, they're lovely to type on. No, they. Yeah, that's the thing. The hardware. Hardware is generally really nice, right? They. They yeah. with some the occasional misstep. I think yeah. that's sometimes like, overstated, but like they yeah. they had nice trackpads way before um, non Mac laptops had nice trackpads. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't like the the iPhones on the basis that, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this. You can't sideload apps. Everything has to come through the app. No, you can't. Yeah, I've got, I've got a, a hand me down iPhone. It's my sister's mm-hmm. old one that she just gave to me when she got an upgrade, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to say, like, mm-hmm. I do prefer iOS to Android, but you can't mm-hmm. sideload. But I know when I had an Android phone, mm-hmm. I never did sideload because I don't. 
I guess, I mean, it helps that I'm not mobile. <laughs> I don't go yeah. anywhere. <laughs> um, but like the things I do on a phone, I don't need to side. Like, I don't care about, I care about my computer because where yeah. I live, I don't care about the phone. And I think iOS is a bit better than Android. I think they're effectively the same thing at this point, but iOS is a little bit smoother and seems to run on like the hardware specs, I think are lower on iPhones for equivalent performance. Hmm. That's uh, interesting, but yeah, I, I mean, I can, I can certainly believe that I've never used an iPhone in my life, but the, <laughs> um, and, and I don't like, I'm, I'm not a big carer of the, I, the, the, the mobile space because mm. your choices are Google and Apple yeah uh, who's going to get excited about that and maybe there'll be a time i mean i tried the, the uh, fair phone with eos on it and that was actually pretty good mm-hmm. um yeah yeah no complaints on that one it, it really it was quite a big phone physically quite big but um i'm not I'm, f- I'm not really super i know there's you know there are movements to you know get a free a free operating system onto phones and stuff i i think that would that would be nice but to me, a phone mm. is an appliance. It is inherently yes. an appliance. So I don't care as much, really. Um, I, care, I, care, I care. Like, I think it's as, as important. No, this is probably overstating it. But I was going to say it's as important that my phone is open source as my toaster is open source. You know, it, it's mm. not quite that true because of the importance of phones in people's lives and communication and blah, blah, blah. It's a little bit mm. more important than that. But I, I, but I, I, I don't really, I, like, as you said, I don't really care about phones. Mm. I the thing is with me is uh, I run Linux on all my machines and I'm very happy with it, but uh, for me I kind of need my phone to be like compatible with certain apps like the yeah the, yeah the, the the app that you pay for parking with the app that you bank with the app that you know mm-hmm. like and I can easily imagine a circumstance where my bank is like oh you're on a unfamiliar operating system that's a security hazard we're going to lock you out. And yeah. I like it, my like as you say, it's there is an appliance factor to it that it's like I I if I need an app for some, we live in a world now where you, where apps are kind of the easiest way to do so 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 many things. Um, mm-hmm. My my parents who were very who were quite anti smartphone ended up getting a smartphone because they wanted to travel with the COVID stuff. So <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. they had to like to do like a COVID passport or that kind of stuff in re- Yeah, you can do it. Technically, you can do it without a smartphone, but it involves sending off stuff in the mail yeah, and yeah, waiting, yeah, 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 yeah. waiting 10 days for something that you could just beep, beep, beep on an app. Yeah. It just, yeah. Uh, and and it, they felt like they'd lost a battle and it was kind of sad, really. And because I, I also felt that like I no longer have a, a smartphone because I want one. I have one because I need one, and I don't yeah. like that. That I feel like I need. It does, it does a, make me a ner- It does make me a bit nervous having like yeah. co- to two corporations being in control of something that that, that is that essential to modern life. That is that is worrying. That's, yeah, and we all know like Google quite regularly just close people's accounts because they, for, for honestly, no solid reason other than they trigger an algorithm. Yeah. Oh, you're using a VPN. Mm, you must be up to something shady. Cut, you know, shut you down. And the thing yeah, we heard, yeah. we saw this actually um, with uh, you know Terraria, the game. Yeah, they had their when they were developing for Google Stadia, their developer account just got shut down. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, fifteen yeah. years of work, and their developer account got shut down. Now they managed because it was such a media storm. They managed to get their account back up and running. Your average person on the street is not going to have that same kind of yeah. clout. So. Yep what happens if i for some reason become ill elig- elig- uneligible for, for a google account <laughs> yeah. what if they decide that they want to close it down f- yeah. and and yeah, i've yeah. got no recourse i've got no recourse because i didn't like i mean what what do right like does that yeah. does that lock me out of society because google don't like me do i have to yeah. buy apple stuff for the rest of my life what happens if apple <laughs> does, does make yeah. a mistake and close my account what if yeah, you know like yeah. mistakes happen we live in a you know imperfect world where mistakes just happen and you can by mistake slip through the cracks and get cut out I of think, I, I do think we're still i think this is going to change if corporations get their way but we are still at the point where as far as google is concerned you're actually pseudonymous right they don't actually know i mean they do algorithmically but like legally speaking they don't know who you are so you mm-hmm. could like you could just set up a new google account right I'm sure well, there's going to come a point where that changes and it's tied to something that, yes, you, but, that you can't change. But, but for now, at least... 
yeah i mean i i i'd be interested to test that hypothesis under like things like well what what happens if you've got a stadia account and you've bought 200 pounds worth of games well obviously stadia yeah. you know, oh yeah no that like, that oh, will be lost but i know i know i do know for a fact that my google account because they keep asking me to tie it to a phone number or something like that right and i've, I've always refused so so my my go my google email address is the last the last link in the chain it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't point to anything else so i i definitely could set up a new a new google account but yeah. as i say i'm not that's not an argument against what you're saying that's i mean that's going to change mm. they're going to want to pin it to something that is identifiable at some point yeah and that's why we need to resist yeah it's 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 remarkable that we live in a world where everything's so app centric and google and and apple just yeah. they just they the, the the absolute unquestionable gatekeepers and is and, and it's a fa is it a failure of policy like i can imagine like the european union possibly eventually coming around to some kind of because they actually they have called out i think it they've called out android for the android were, were android at one point going to get rid of side loading apps and then the european union stepped in and say oh no, yeah no. something like yeah i remember reading that i can't remember the details but something along those lines yeah i mean the, the european union clearly lean a bit more in the right direction than some of the rest of the world but i think the problem you know you know the cookie thing on websites mm -hmm. and what an absolute pain in the ass that is yeah i think that's the kind of i wish they were a bit more because obviously in making that decision to say that you know if a website serves you cookies they have to tell you exactly what cookies are serving you and give you a mechanism for opting out blah 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 mm. blah and of course the corporations are going to make that as inconvenient as possible because they don't want you to do that what yeah. they should have done in in making that law what they were recognizing is is that the these cookies are anti-consumer they're bad right mm. they are an attack on people um, mm. so if they recognize that why not just make them out illegal that's my problem with like the EU solution to things. They 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 recognize that these things are harmful, but they didn't want to upset the corporations that much. So they said, you've just got to tell people you're doing it, knowing full well that they would just make that as inconvenient as possible. They should have just said, you're not allowed to do this. Uh, yeah. I think, I, that, mean, my point being, I think that's the kind of solutions you're going to get from the EU. They're going to be half ass wishy-washy. And, 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 you know, that law has made my life less... <laughs> I kind of <laughs> preferred it when I, it was just accepting all the cookies by default and I could set it in the browser, you know, the security level of that, which sites yeah. can, of course, ignore. I'm aware of that. But it's such a pain in the ass when you visit a new site now and the pop it in. And if you choose, obviously, if you choose not to accept the cookies, you get that every time you visit that site. Yes. There is, uh, yeah. there is a browser add-on which which deals with many of them automatically, but it still it stalls you. You can't use the page until that's done doing doing its thing. It's it really is. I mean, it's a tiny thing. It's a first world problem without a doubt, but it is a pain. Yes, um, for sure. Yeah, and yeah, like, but it's, well, it's the best we got. You know, like they yeah, are, no, for sure. Do, yeah, you know, they do things like they standardize, um, or they, 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 you know, they do that thing where they standardize phone charges and, and all that, yeah, kind of stuff, yeah, no, for sure. That's that, that is all good. Stuff. I just, my point is, I just wish they go a bit further, which, oh, for sure. you know. but like, I mean, yes, and I fully agree with that, but also to go as far as we would want to go would like would, would probably be unrealistic, right. For sure, but I think there's a point where we'd be like we'd recognise that's as far as they can go, and we're, yeah. they're not there, right? I understand sure, yeah. what they are and how far they can go, and I think they can go a bit further than they are. They can go a lot further, yeah. But um, and I think they may get there. Like they seem to be drifting in Maybe. the right direction, but also Maybe. like when we talk about the European Union, like it, I mean, it's it's such a complex. Um, oh yeah instit well i mean if you call it an institution really because you've got <laughs> yeah. different segments pulling against each other all the time um yeah. the, the the one thing i can tell you with because uh, i have an international polit politics degree and the one thing i can tell you about all this kind of stuff is if you think it's complicated on the surface it's 10 times complicated underneath there's no yeah. such thing as a simple solution. I mean, for starters, sense. you can, you can, there, there are a hundred, you know, the question, what is the EU? There are a hundred answers to that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a hundred true answers is my point. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, um, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, they trend in the right direction, but also like, you know, they, they are balancing, you know, I mean, in terms of a, as a political institution, they're kind of like liberal capitalist, right? Yeah. I mean, then it's an it's an, a neoliberal. I mean, one of the answers to the question "What is the EU?" is 
it's a way for Germany to abuse poorer countries through country, you know, through controlling their currency, right? It, yeah. what, what Germany did to Greece, and it what it to be it was the EU, but you know, Germany yeah. really. Um, that was inexcusable. Thousands of people died because of that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and that's one of the things that EU, the EU is, and you know, there's other things that you are that I admire greatly. You know, the 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 yeah. Convention on Human Rights, the a lot of the cooperation stuff, amazing, love it. Yeah. But yeah, and, anybody but, who's entirely pro or anti EU is not thinking about it hard enough because it is exactly. incredibly complicated. <laughs> it's it's one of the most complicated things <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that we yeah. have. You know, like yeah, it's yeah, and and. So, you know, e even us British people who are allegedly Brexited from it all, <laughs> we're not. Like, because the thing is, <laughs> is it, it's not like we've moved the island a away from the mainland Europe. Like, like there's still going to be trade that needs to be done. There are still going to be, like... Well, still, I was wondering, like, when, you, when you said that they're drifting in the right direction, I was wondering, like, how much of that is because we left. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Stop pulling them in the wrong direction. Yeah. And, well, there's, I mean, you know, we still have, like, I, I, I imagine we still have, like, what, 800,000 British people living in Spain or something like that? Like, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah, like, it, and, and also, of course, what they do is is going to impact us. We, we've just withdrawn yeah. our... our representation from it so yeah yeah it's um but anyway that aside um yes uh for sure that if i phones that's where we were wasn't it um yeah can you can you talk for a minute while i go to the toilet uh i well i can pause do you would you prefer me to pause or we could go That'd to a be commercial great. break. Oh, no, we don't have any sponsors. No, I'll just <laughs> do, do a commercial break. You do a commercial okay. break. I'm going to. All right. I'll do, okay, I'll do a commercial break. Um, so, have you ever considered getting a home on the Fediverse? Uh, it is uh, not one place, but actually thousands of places that are hosted on many computers by many people. It's a living, breathing organic network, uh, a social network, if you will, uh, that is owned and operated by the people who use it. It's not even funded with one uh, mechanism. It's not funded through... Uh, basically, it's it's usually crowdfunded, but... Um, uh, but... Uh, sometimes people will just have a Raspberry Pi in their house and that will be a server. Or um, sometimes they'll just do it on Amazon or sometimes they'll do it on DigitalOcean. And it's um, and they all talk to each other and you can... Um, uh, and have fun and share memes. And Look, Chris, how much does hey, this cost? Uh, it, how ever much, it, uh, however much, depends what server you're on. Maybe they might ask for a Patreon contribution, or maybe they yeah, might just be, money. yeah. Well, Toot Dot Wales is actually funded by grant money, which is kind of nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, but some some will ask for a Patreon donation. Some will just, just, just uh, be <laughs> sponsored by. By a, a company or an organization uh, or several um, yeah and and Fediverse is great isn't it Fediverse is great uh, that was terrible I'm gonna cut I think I might cut no, that, that, you know. no it's great I loved it but <laughs> I was gone a little bit too long and you ran out of things to say but that was great yeah um, yeah and actually do you know the Fediverse is, is, is about 10 years old is it really? Mm. If you go back to the precursor to GNU Social. Do you know what else is about 10 years old? I'm just checking my facts so I can do a cool segue. Oh. <laughs> uh, See if you what, can get what, while I'm finding out. Uh, what else is 10 years old? Um, oh, God. Wikipedia is, dis is disambiguating me too hard. Things that are 10 years old. I don't know. Um... Well, ten years old, ten years ago was two thousand twelve. Oh, um, okay. 
It's actually 14 years old. Uh, Wikipedia? Nope. Wayland. Oh, Wayland. Wayland is 14 yeah. years old. And I, so I, I mentioned earlier that I got a new graphics card. It's an AMD graphics card. I, and because it was an AMD graphics card, I was like, I can get Wayland to go see what it's like. Mm-hmm. I've always had a problem with Wayland's design, the security model, the, the, way, they've, the way they've dealt with security. Um, yeah. And uh, trying Wayland is kind of like uh, uh, an illustration of all of those <laughs> Like misgivings, <laughs> it's everything that I thought would be wrong with it because of that design is wrong with it. Mm. Um, I think if if you use GNOME or KDE, I think you're probably fine. You can use Wayland, and you won't even know you're using Wayland. It's you know it'll, it'll, great. But the, the, my main problem with it is because it is just a protocol, not you know a software. Um, it, the, the onus is on. Uh, how can I put this simply? Like <laughs> every window manager needs to implement everything that, that a display server should do. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so you know, and and there, there are there, there are common libraries to do this are emerging, but it's but it's just a really inelegant and also the whole idea that like I don't want you know Windows because part of what lets me do the things I do currently is that, that there's very little security on X, right? Windows can see what each other's doing. Every window can know what the keyboard is doing, regardless of which window is focused, right? Yeah. And that would be a security concern. You know, on a phone, you wouldn't want that because you've got all these apps from, you know, completely untrusted. I'm running, mm. I'm running Linux, and I'm, all my stuff is installed from the package manager. And for me, that is enough trust. Like, I'm not installing things mm. from, you know, Google's App Store or Apple's App Store or random websites, right? Mm. Every piece of software, I'm going to put games aside for now, but like every piece of software I run is either compiled by myself from a source that I trust or from the repositories which I trust. You, you, you can argue that I'm wrong to trust them, but that's a pretty trustworthy source. Yeah. So I think Wayland's design philosophy, I think, is for phones. That's where it makes mm-hmm. sense. And I'm mm-hmm. not running a phone. I'm running a PC. So it's just a massive inconvenience for the people making the window managers. And you know, I've tried, I've tried some of the smaller window managers running on Wayland and they all just have problems that stem from this design philosophy. It's just really hit and miss. It's 14 years old, and it doesn't work yet. And that is really disappointing. And I kind of hope that it just dies in something simpler and more just like an X redux with, with you know, the modern stuff, yeah, the modern compositing that should be in there, in there. Yeah. It's, so... it's sad. So what's what's the thing that you come up against then? What's like the first thing that maybe a lay person would notice if they're? I, well, as I said, I think a lay person. If you're running GNOME or KDE, mm-hmm. it would be fine, and that you know the lay person that's probably what they're doing. And but that's kind of illustrates the problem that you know the big ones with a ton of resources behind them can deal with all the problems, but like the smaller mm-hmm. window managers can't. The smaller window managers, it, it'd just be. I mean, it was it was. It was odd, random things that were different on every window manager that I tried. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of it was uh, when it, you know stuff with games. Like when you run a full screen game, it's literally like a dice roll as to what's going to happen. Um, and certain things just not running. Uh, you know, the things that get cited often are like things like uh, what you call it. Uh, you know, things that show on screen what your keyboard is doing for videos and stuff. Yeah. Like that has to be coded by the you know the the particular compositor as in the window manager, um, yeah. streaming that has to be coded in uh, implemented in every single window manager rather than handled by something higher up. But uh, it it's it's things like that. It's just hmm. it's putting such a massive amount of work on on the plate of people making you know like small window managers. Hmm. So it's 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 making developing software basically more prohibitive to i think so yeah and I, honestly i yeah. think that might be part of its point i think they i think i think there's a sort of there's a cadre of influencers mm. within linux that want that they want it to be standardized mm. and it, and it's the sort of the the, the red hat um uh gnome um you know, it's like triad or there's another one i can't remember but they i think they want everybody to be on gnome everybody using the same applications in the same way because they because it makes life easier for developers right generally yeah. speaking for sure but that's not a, that's not the operating system that i want right 
Yeah. I get I get the upsides of that, but they're not upsides for me. Do you think we can live in a world where they coexist? I think I think we always will. I think no matter how hard they try to turn Linux into that, um, mm. there'll always be this rebellious little corner. And I think I think because they've made Wayland so like prohibitive, I think that corner will be running X, and that's go- that might be a problem for the future. Because X is what old clunky being held together well, with it, string it, and duct tape. No, just in, if their goal is like unity, mm-hmm. uh, and they want everybody running, and then because of their behaviour, half half of people are running X and half of people are running Wayland. That makes everything worse for every developer, right? If you've got to deal with mm-hmm. both of those. Well, what take for example OBS, uh, which is probably one of the m- more. No, I was going to say it's more commonly used piece of software. Probably not, actually. But it's certainly a piece of software that a lot of people like having on yeah. Linux. Can yeah. that ever work in Wayland? It, I did manage to get that working in Wayland. But it is, you've got to jump through a lot of hoops. And that, to be fair, that will be smoothed out in the future. But, the, but again, the problem with that is, in order to make that work, um, work has to be done in every single display manager. Right, sorry, in every single window. You know, what, what we now call a window manager. Um, rather than, you know, on, on X, that it doesn't care about your window manager. It's talking to X, right? Yeah. But because there isn't, isn't really a Wayland, Wayland's just a thing that you implement. It, it's yeah. implemented in every single window manager. So every single window manager has to make that mechanism for plugging into OBS and for, you know, polling keyboard and all the other things that, that you know, X does easily. Yeah. Okay. So, are you going to? So, you switch back to X, right? Yeah. Oh, so bef- before before that, I mean, I've tried Wayland before now and then, uh, mm. but not not extensively, really. I just had a quick look at it, um, and I would I'd, I'd been I'd been um, what's what's the word? I've been Wayland. I've been suspicious of Wayland. I did. It didn't sound mm. like a good idea, and now having tried it, and I, and I spent like a good few days making it work as well as well as I possibly could. Um, mm. I'm now. I would say I'm anti Wayland. Um, I can't see myself ever using it. Even, even if they, even if they, even if it, even if for me it works perfectly, I'm yeah. aware of like just the terrible design decisions that have gone into that. When X is mm. is rel- you know, th- their claims are that X is complex and you know and, and, and um, huge and and inefficient and all of these things, but it works great. And from a user point of view, it works very simply. Yeah, I have now remembered why I don't use Wayland. Yeah. I don't use Wayland because I use a VPN and firewall combination that I'm very happy with. Um, and I, like an absolute lamo, use a GUI to manage my firewall. I use what is it? G U F W. Uh huh. And you cannot oh, use. Wayland. Uh, that do, I well, last time I checked, it doesn't work on Wayland because you have to run it as root, and Wayland doesn't mm-hmm. permit you to run. Yes, GUIs it's things like that root. that just feel very much like I get the security argument. Of course yeah. I do, but as I say, I'm you know I trust my software because it's coming from the repository first of all, mm. um, and secondly, I think it, it's not it's not inherent to the Unix philosophy, but part of part of Linux culture and Unix culture is your computer does what you tell it to do, and you can tell it to do anything. Like, if you want to run your whole system as root, it's a stupid idea, but you can do it, right? And 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 what that that Wayland approach feels more like, you know, like like iOS, like Android. It's like, no, you can't be trusted. You can't be trusted to you to make the decisions, you know. And for less technical users, that might, you know, it's a safer option. I get it, but for me, that's not what I want. I want my computer to do exactly what I tell it, even if it's a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it, it's, yeah. That, I mean, that's that is the thing I like about Linux in general. You delete mm. something, it gets deleted. You know, it's yeah, all, yeah. you know, what's what's the? I don't the, use a big. RM, you know, you know when you RMFR. used to be able to do like rm slash and just remove your root, right? Um, mm-hmm. And they added that thing where you you have to pass it a, an argument now to be able to do that. And there was there was quite yeah. a furore about that. There were people saying, no, this isn't. That's not how this works. If somebody <laughs> would you know tells it to like blah blah, and you know I'm. I don't care about that particular one, but like that's the point, right? If you want to do something yeah. stupid, but there is that meme where we where uh, it's like, oh, you know, someone's on a forum, 
please help me. I can't do X, Y, and Z. And they go, oh, it's okay. Open up a console, RMFR star or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, slash, yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. Uh, and like, it's, it's I would, like, say, I would yeah, say that's a social problem, though. Like that's like that's like somebody you know, so, somebody asking somebody for help, and it's like they say, "Oh yeah, you just get this gun and and shoot." yourself like that's mm. <laughs> that's the problem there is not that guns exist or you know the problem there is that that person is a very bad person for sure but it's um it's so easy to i, I mean there was a time uh, i remember many years ago i was playing something on a, a game or something and I was like, oh, do you know what the key combination for this weapon is or something like that? And someone said, Alt F4. And <laughs> I just instinctively yeah. went, oh, yeah, okay, thank you for that. Alt F4, game closes. It's like, damn, you <laughs> yeah, got me. Yeah. You got me. And I, okay, there were no stakes involved, nothing, you know, it's just a bit yeah. of harmless fun. But even knowing what, I knew what Alt F4 did, but I did it anyway out of we all have off days you know and yeah, we yeah, all no, and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're, we're, and we're so, inclined to trust each other which is which so, is a good thing but it costs yeah, us sometimes i mean they call it a sanity check don't they we're just like are you sure like i just want to let you know what this command <laughs> yeah. is doing and i go if you yeah. really want to do it i mean that's fine yeah in, in the case of rm rm uh root, yeah, of course that is a sensible thing to do i'm, I'm on board but not not to the point where yeah wayland right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's nuanced you know like it's, it's it's a matter of drawing the line but i can sort of almost understand why people did kick i can understand the other side of the argument of in, of in it being the slippery slope type of thing right it's like yeah you know the nanny state of computers type of thing you know it's like well, <laughs> yeah yeah well you know you won't I've, I've got a little a little bit of a twist to this though that um mm -hmm. a really handy foss tool which is kind of related to wayland um mm -hmm. this is it's called GameScope. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a modification of something that exists on the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. And its purpose is you can run uh, you can use it for any application, but you can run a game in it and the game believes that it has sole access to one monitor. Right? Okay. So you can use that and then you can you have a window that as far as the program is concerned is just the monitor uh, mm -hmm. and you can do what you want with that window. So the reason it's handy for games is that you can there are certain, there are some games, especially for me on on DWM. There's some games that I cannot convince to run at a lower resolution than my monitor. No matter what resolution I set, they'll actually run at the resolution of my monitor because DWM doesn't baby windows in the way that some window managers does. So I can use this to run a game at like 1080 uh, in a in a full screen window. The game thinks it's running at 1080, uh, but it's actually uh, sorry, the game is running at 1080, and then it's being scaled up to my monitor size by GameScope. And it okay. uses that, I can't remember, oh, that, that AMD FSR, which is that very, very fancy upscaling. Mm. And it's kind of amazing. I've played some games uh, that usually would just look like a... I've got a 2K monitor, right? It's not huge, mm -hmm. but it's 2K. Um, and there are games that would look like a blurry mess if I upscaled them um, or, you know, run them... At, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but GameScope, it looks. I, I can't tell that it's not native resolution. It's kind of amazing. Um, mm. One of the uses I've had for it is games, games with games with very tiny UI and no UI scaling option. Yeah. Um, so I'm running them at 1080, and then yeah, with this upscaling, you know, uh, viewing them on my 2K monitor, and it's great. It's a mm. really hand and anything that just misbehaves when it's full screen. You know, some there are some games that just don't behave well full screen. Yeah, um, use it for that. It's absolutely fantastic. It's I'm using it for so many games now, even games that I don't need to. I'm just running at 1080 and upscaling because it looks just as good, and I get more frames. Yeah, uh, that, what that it, kind of... the reason it's sorry, very quickly. The reason it's mm -hmm. related to Wayland is it, it's actually using X Wayland. It's actually spawning an X Wayland window mm. uh, that that you know you, you could probably do this with X, but like the, the game believes is the you know the entire monitor kind of thing. That's interesting. It's yeah, really it cool. Me. It's made for the Steam Deck because, of course, they want to, yeah, all the things I just described, they want to do that. They, they want the, the Steam Deck, they want games to always be full screen and but be able to be different actual resolutions to save battery and stuff, right? So it's, yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's why it was made. Hmm. I, I remember when I played the Grand Theft Auto 3 on, through Wine on multiple monitors, the horrible problem that I had was that it didn't capture the mouse. Because yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. In in the days of GTA three, 
I think it was the game. I don't even think it was wine. I think it was the game because the game just didn't conceive of the idea of people running multiple monitors. Yeah, no, of because course, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, no, this, this will be a solution to that. And you can also, you can set the size, you can set, oh, you can obviously set the resolution of the monitor that the game sees and you can also set the size of the, you know, the actual window. Mm. Um, and as I say, this, this AMD upscaling is, is really amazing, really crisp. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that would be a solution to that problem for sure. That's good. Do you can you control frame rates on it? Uh, like you in theory can. Right? Like, yeah, the instructions on the website uh, say that you can, but it didn't work for me. And that probably most of those things like that end up being because DWM doesn't you know plug into those things. But oh, okay. um, yeah, in theory you can. Yeah, you can control. So a game that doesn't have uh, a frame cap option and doesn't mm. behave well with VSync, you can. Yeah, apparently you can set uh, limit the frame rate with. Um, with GameScope, it look it's mm. really handy. It's one of those things that when you hear about it, doesn't sound that handy. Like I just thought, oh, I, 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 actually, I can I, think I, of several uses yeah. right off the bat. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm using, I'm yeah. probably using it for about a quarter of the games that I play now for various mm. reasons. Old, old games, I think, uh, would would benefit from that a lot. I remember on uh, Hitman Blood Money, there mm. is a path you can take on the way out of the first mission, where it, you're you're um, shimmying down a cliff, and for some reason, if your frame rate is too high, you get stuck on a bit. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, yeah. So you, and also that game, like it ties a lot of things to the frame rate and including, yeah. of all things, the distance bullets fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember a lot of old games would tie, yeah, they would use the, because you know, everybody had a 60 hertz monitor back in the day, right? Why not? Yeah. No, that's not think, the, that's not the logic, is it? But still, yeah, yeah. Grand Theft Auto Vice City has one as well. I can't remember what it is, um, but I had to. I but that has a frame limiter in the game, so that's not a, right. That's right, a yeah. But the trouble is with those kind of situations and those kind of games is that it's never ever ever obvious that it's the frame rate that's the issue. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like I, at the moment, like it's like forty seven was getting stuck on the on the way out of the, the blood money level and it's like I, what's going on like th there is nothing that would any logical conceivable like interpretation of that is oh the frame rate's too high <laughs> yeah like, yeah yeah it's it's almost one of those things you need a little notice on the wall saying look is, is a game from the mid 2000s <laughs> playing up it might very well be that the frame rate is too high um you can turn on a v-sync and then it it fixes it but um yeah you get and of course there's ui, UI scaling which yeah that would be uh, yeah this this, and, this tool actually obviously it's designed for games but i was curious as to whether i could just run arbitrary applications inside it hmm. um and i tried that and you can you can i just opened my terminal inside gamescope <laughs> which just looks very very strange but it works so yeah i'm sure that like people could probably come up with like clever things to do with this and it looks like it's released on under the BSD2 clause license. That's cool. That's a good license. Yeah. Um, yeah no, super, super handy tool. That's kind of kind of awesome. Hmm. Ah, oh, good to good, good to know that one actually. Because I like mm. to be fair these days. I typically only, or the vast majority of games I play tend to be between 1999 and 2010. That's my. Mm. To me, that's my, I don't, I don't want to say like nostalgia because, but like, that's just, I like that golden era of games. It's when games are simpler. Yeah, I don't think it's just nostalgia. I think, I think that was, I, I probably talked about this before, but like, you know, there was a few games, Mor Morrowind, Twin Twi Twi yeah. and Half-Life 1, uh, but Morrowind and Deus Ex, and you got the System Shock just before. Um, mm -hmm. And there were games that like, I'm pretty sure I said this before, but they, they, they were the what? What was the term that's used for those kind of games now? The something sim, the immer immersive sim, right? Immersive sim, yeah. Where you know they were trying to make it. Um, oh god, my brain's completely letting me down. What's the term for emerge? Like emergent stuff, right? Yeah. Um, you could you could manipulate things in ways that hadn't been done in games before. Yeah. Um, you could, you could make mechanical choices in ways that hadn't been done in games before. Yeah. Um. And this pointed to like a bright future of gaming, but that was actually, and we all thought, you know, oh, where are going? Games are going to be amazing in like five years, but they actually they never got, they never went further down that path. So it's kind of yeah. like it's a peak in terms of those games. Those are the best examples of those kind of games, still, right? Yeah, yeah, and it, and it felt a little bit, a little bit like 
particularly with your fallouts your bethesda's your open worlds your uh your grand theft autos they felt like gen like they felt like almost like board games in that like it gave you like a set of rules it gave you a world and you kind of approached it as you wish yeah it, it felt less on rails it was and... more more a world. it was a simulated world rather than just mm. a, a game a, a you know and, and a lot of it is they're the type of game like if you go and, and watch speedrunners on twitch or on youtube they the the majority of games are from this era because they have that they have a much wider scope than a lot of games mod yeah. now not exclusively and there are many games that are before that era that uh that speed run that mal like malleability like you yes. can try stupid stuff exactly exactly and, I, and, I, and I really kind of will make you really fast <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I, I I've recently been having like thinking quite a lot about like how um nostalgia can be quite harmful. Um yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And there's a there's a wonderful example on a local issue. Um called so basically it, it, not in my newspaper catchment area, but in a neighboring area, there are these uh ponds. Uh these ponds are formed because of a quarry, basically a quarry. And in order to preserve these ponds, uh, every couple of decades, they need to basically do some maintenance on a dam that costs millions of pounds of generally taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. And the, the, um, the Wildlife Association uh, are thinking about dismantling these dams and rewilding the area. It's going to change the landscape a fair bit, but it's going to mean that the entire like area is not going to be preserved by these big old concrete structures that yeah. are, that, are, that are you know keeping the water where it needs to be there's a big campaign to save the to keep it as it is because and if you ask people about this it's because um they'll they'll generally give you a basically the same story every time but dip their own personal variation of it which is when i was a young boy my dad, my parents, they took me down, they walked in the area, we went fishing there, something, you know, I walked the dog there with my grandmother who's no longer with us and all this kind of stuff. They have this kind of nostalgic uh, yep. connection to it. And that really is their reason for wanting to maintain this dam and, and keep everything preserved as it is at the, at, at, at the cost of a lot of money. Like, you know, millions of pounds is not yeah, yeah. for a local authority to spend on... Do the dams serve any? You know, is 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 there a reservoir? Do the dams serve any function other than this? Or no, no. Like the okay, the, okay. the Wildlife Association, they 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 think that it's best if it's just re like it's taken yeah. back. Okay. Because what they want to do is take it back to what it was before it was a quarry almost. Where yeah. so so if you want to go, you know, if you want to apply the 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 <laughs> very basic logic of older is better then yeah. you would want to rewild it because that's that's the more natural way of no, doing it. I I I'm 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 always I've never been comfortable with with nostalgia and 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 that kind of thing because I'm not saying it's always or, I'm not saying they, they they necessarily overlap but there's there's kind of a fine line between nostalgia and being reactionary, right? Yes. Uh, there certainly seem to be a, a big link. Like I mean, if you like if you look at like the your typical gammon, right? Your typical Yeah old man jeremy clarkson type of person they have these ways of just clinging on to the past and over romanticizing the past I mean, in a way a that just it sorry, doesn't sorry. seem healthy sorry yeah. yeah there's a there's a there's a fat there's a fat streak in american politics of like romanticizing mm. the 50s right yes you know simpler times where we had full employment and the world was the world was easier to understand all this all this mm. stuff and you know that's that's all fine unless you know like, but you know black people couldn't vote you know black yeah. people in the south had no yeah. rights women had fewer rights you 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 hmm. you're ignoring a lot to get there and um yeah, yeah i i, I and, and and also i think that in in all like honesty with a real truly critical brain 
I think a lot of the bad stuff gets pushed out of your memory and you only oh, remember no, course, the yeah, good no, stuff course, as well. Of course, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, I mean, we're talking, if you want to go back to the 50s, were, were women even allowed a credit card without their husband's permission back then? I don't think so, right? Yeah. And, and all, I mean, on top of that, the reason why there was full employment is because World War II had just happened. Exactly, <laughs> yes, yeah. Right, there's always yeah. a technological mm-hmm. boom as well, but look, that was a lot, you know, mm-hmm. in the and also, the war, a lot, like, there's, there's there's a lack of there's a lack of like curiosity about the reasons for these things. It's also yeah. you're coming you're coming off the back of the, like the New Deal, a lot of mm. you know government spending, social social government investment. <laughs> you know, if you want to get something like the fifties, how about you have a lot of like government investment? That might be a way to go. Mm. Well, you know, yes, but it does seem like your right wing parties seem to have the, they, they they manipulate that nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. For, as a political weapon, really, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like South Park have mim- yeah, they they they've done a bit with the member berries. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I I think it's a bit they they do it in a much more broader way. But like, I think a lot of our political damage is done by this like fetishization of the past of the old ways of you know was wasn't it great when the world was easy to understand when yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. have all these phone apps and all of the the faffing around but of course you know like there are so many other things that come into play there are seven billion people on the planet and by extension which is you know when which is like well like three times as much as there was you know several many yeah. decades ago right so what what that brings with it i mean how many cars on more cars on the road right that that factor yeah. alone right makes life different right yep. that like uh, you know, and 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 you know, with with all things, there's some good, there's some bad, right? But like, how how do you manage a society now with this many cars on the road? Like, it's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. difficult. No, right? I, I like, agree. Nostalgia is is it, it can be weaponized by the right in politics for sure. But mm-hmm. would you, you know, if somebody's enjoying, if somebody's like into retro gaming, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you can play old games without being nostalgic, right? You can enjoy yes. old things without being nostalgic. But when when they apply nostalgia to it, and there's this kind of there's almost pretense that everything was better back in the day. Does mm. you know when it's iso- when it's about games? Does it not make you nervous? Because because for me that still makes me a little bit un- uncomfortable. It's something it seems I to definitely be, question. It's kidding yourself, and it's oversimplifying. It's the it's the same it's the same pattern, right? Yeah, but like I think okay, so yes, like it is something I'm aware of. It is something that I definitely like. Am I like? Well, for example, take for example OpenMW, uh, the Morrowind open source re-implementation. It is it makes Morrowind better. Yeah, it makes yeah. Morrowind playable on modern hardware uh, in 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 much better ways. It does tweaks like it 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 fixes some bugs with the spell making system. It gives you a toggle crouch. It does lots of these little things. It makes the game better. Um, so you know if it was purely nostalgia i would probably reject the new additions that they bring on to morrowind yeah yeah and uh, and just insist on the purity think, of yeah, the yeah nostal- obviously nostalgia and reactionaryism like purity mm-hmm. is kind of central to that right and purity is a very dodgy idea <laughs> when, yes, when applied well, yeah. politically yeah um, exactly um so, but I d- it is definitely something that i question but also one thing that I think is also very, 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 very relevant is me enjoying an old film or video game is not impacting someone else's life. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. when it's when you apply it to like politics, then you start dragging other people into the past with you, and that is bad. Well, I mean, there's also you you can you can enjoy something from the past and be critical of it at the same oh, time. Well, like, have to acknowledge it. I've been watching a lot of old films lately, and you know, you're mm-hmm. like some 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 of some of the stuff that characters say and do is politically incredibly dodgy, but you still enjoy mm-hmm. the film so long as you have that critical layer, right? And you're not saying it's all simple; all films should be like this, you know. Mm. Well, interestingly enough, and I I don't imagine you're you're a fan of the show Friends. <laughs> is it? Uh, I think all of those who live through the '90s have a have a, a relationship with Friends. Let's say, yes. Um, my girlfriend at the time would watch that show. It seemed like 24 hours a day. So I'm very mm. familiar with Friends, and it's tied to some fond memories. But I, I never, I, I don't think it's as good a show as it's sort of remembered to be. I have watched a few older episodes. Yeah, like I'm not hugely attached to Friends. I, I like you consider it a phenomena of its time. 
yeah. uh, there are some episodes that are quite homophobic in Friends. Oh, I'm sure, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Where, where the even the plot line itself is is pretty it has a implied homophobia, right? You don't even need to go back that. Like, I think thing, things from the 2010s are st- are now like surprisingly homophobic. Like uh, uh, yeah. episodes of like The Office, for example, or um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Not no, never appealed to me. Not watched it, but yeah, uh, I, I it it's. It's funny, but so juvenile, which mm-hmm. was where some of the, but with, with them friends, uh, I was, I was chatting to this with someone the other day and it was like, one of the actual really good things about friends is that the, uh, the female characters in it at the time actually were like fleshed out proper characters. They, they weren't like female caricatures or one dimensional characters. They were an equal and they had agency, of, right? They had agency over their own lives and exactly and that was yeah. quite uh, a lot of, like women in my life have told me like they say yeah that was quite like a a, a big deal for, for them yeah. because yeah. before then women were like the wives of the main character husband <laughs> yeah. the, you know yeah. the, all this kind of stuff and with friends it was like a break. so it was definitely like it made steps in the right direction in some areas and then back in the other you know and and and, and yeah but still had improvements to make sure. That's always the thing is that's all that is always the case when you go, you know, there's always progress mm, in it uh, hand in hand with, you know, it's, things are of their time, no matter how mm. progressive they are. It's very rare that you get somebody who can completely, you know, uh, be escaped from their, you know, the, the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, how many civil rights activists through the, <coughs> the 60s were, were shit to women, right? Like, you know, it's, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, you know, you get, you get, you know, you get, you get yeah, the, the feminists yeah. who were anti Semitic and, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's always the, the problems, but, you know, you got to, history is dirty. You got to take it. Exactly. Yeah. And I I think, great, yeah. it's great to celebrate it, acknowledge that it was, sh- that, would, that it was very bad, but, you know, try to be comparing. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm saying. It's complex, I guess, is what we're yeah. saying, right? And yeah, and and I think like nostalgia can definitely like it, it's it's a the point, the point there is not to go like friend mm. friends. It's not to oversimplify, right? Have that mm. critical thing. Friends was great in terms of yeah, its portrayal of women, but it was awful for homophobia. Like you you mm. you can say both things and still enjoy Friends. Yes, for sure. Oh, I'm I mean I am probably like there's going to be all kinds of problematic stuff that i have a fondness for you know and i think i think that's the case for everyone really isn't it it's i, I definitely have a line like i just i, I kind of reject hmm. i not reject i kind of avoid anything um lovecraft based mm-hmm. just because like even for his time he was so racist yeah and like the work isn't the person i get that like you know i can enjoy the work and blah 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 but i mean the work is incredibly racist but you know things derive from, you know mm. if there's a, a, a game about cthulhu or whatever i'm not saying i mm. will not play any game based on cthulhu but i do shy away from it just because of how astonishingly racist he was yeah like i yeah i i don't know if i've got like a like a, a line i know where it is but there's de- yeah like for sure there's a line mm. yeah yeah um yeah i i yeah it's but but yeah so yeah it, it's it's a case of seeing things for what they are uh but also like i think that there is it, like you were saying with with how mac were cutting the 32-bit support and stuff it's like sometimes yeah. the so it's okay to have a clean break right it's okay to yeah, like yeah. move forward uh mm. in, in you know with, with progress not to let uh, a, a a a you know not, not let the uh, uh, and also, like, get get a bit of a bit more of a sophisticated. Like I said, with the you know part, part of the reason why the fifties was so great for the people it was great for was you know the, the spending under FDR. Like, mm. get yourself a bit of a bit of a more complex understanding. You know, and it's not that simple. I'm simplifying, of course, but mm. you know, think about things in a in a more complex way and enjoy them in, more, in a more complex way. Don't yeah. don't because I mean that's you know when you see I, I don't want to get get into specifics and politics, but you know the the, the Trumpian style of politics or the you know the boris johnsonian style of politics just that tendency to massively simplify to say you know yeah. x is bad y is great that's never the case <laughs> you exactly. know? Yeah. like yeah a bit of nuance and it's yeah but it is also it, it is playing into that 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 yeah. yeah 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 for sure for sure for sure um so i've been yeah like i've been thinking a lot about you know like a, a lot about that kind of stuff actually interestingly enough uh, 
I have been sorting through my photos recently, right? So I've I've basically I've been been becoming very familiar with my my memories and my perception of of the past, um, because I've I've pulled off my photos from Google Photos, and I'm I'm using them as files again. So I'm not using the the big long timeline that you get with Google Photos. Yeah, I'm actually storing them the old fashioned way, uh, in um in folders, and. I sorted through all of them. For for our our younger listeners, could you describe what a folder is? Uh, Probably not, really. (laughs) It's very, very hard. Yeah, there's a joke, obviously. You just don't get them on phone. Well, I mean, I've got a file manager on my phone. A simple file manager. Oh, no, they exist. But, like, unless you install a file manager, you're never going to be exposed to a folder on a phone, really, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, even Google Files, the, the the Google File Manager in it. Yeah, no, it pretends it, it's all it, flat, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, but I, I, I painstake. Well, not necessarily painstakingly, but I went through all my old photographs and I deleted the ones that I didn't want, or didn't feel were were of any value to it. I cut about half of my photos, all in all. There were some <laughs> photos that were like a set, right? So they were like maybe I did a, a like a, a photo shoot for a. Uh, I did a photo shoot for a junk shop and I've got a set of really nice photographs of just old junk that was in this junk shop. Great set of photos. That was fine. Like, But there were a lot of um, stuff that I took just almost like, oh, I'm out and about. I'm going to take some nice things. I actually ended up getting rid of a lot of still life. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot of like, oh, that's a pretty flower. I'm going to take a picture of that pretty flower. Um, I kind of like hate still life now. Um <laughs> because it's like, oh, it's a picture of a nice lake. It's a picture of a nice view. I mean, it might as well be a postcard. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm literally like, and 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 in terms of like, as a photo, you know, not to be too snobby or anything, but in terms of as a photography skill, it's like the the base level of, <laughs> yeah. of doing something. Right? It's just like you go to a nice place, you take a photograph. You obey some basic rules about lighting and the rule of thirds and all that kind of stuff. But anyone can pick that up from a from a YouTube video, all that kind of stuff. And this is a little bit of me working in the newspaper and stuff like that. But like to me, the real um, skill of a photograph is capturing something that ideally only happens once. Right? Like it's it's you're capturing a moment. Right? So yeah. my favorite photograph, or I've got a few favorite photographs. One of my favorite photographs that I've taken was the the day before lockdown, um, where I was locking up the office at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and I went out onto the street and it was just empty. And I've never seen the street that empty. One person, <laughs> one car in the whole of a high street. And I took a photograph of it because I thought, there, there is a very distinct possibility. Never in my lifetime will I see that. That's yep. the street that empty in the middle of the day. Like that's a phenomena. It was, it was like something. It was like being in a film. You know, it's like twenty eight days later or something yeah. like that. Like it was, just, it was crazy. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, another one of my favorite photographs is from the twenty nineteen election hustings, where I know, a, I know the one you're talking about. It's yeah, really nice that. It's, it's got a, that. It's, it's almost a, got that accidental renaissance or whatever yes. yeah accidental renaissance where... renaissance is baroque but yeah we don't need yeah to and uh it was so it was look it was in um this village hall packed in standing room only and it was like and and there was um there's a little sign at the far end which is which read this is our happy place right just like you'd <laughs> get in a village hall it even had the little canteen shutter down like you know how they, they <laughs> yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just a perfect scene. There were people lying down left and right, and there was the person standing at the back who was the chair of the hustings with a microphone. It it was like it was organic enough that it 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 um it felt real. Well, it felt real because it was real, but also it was just framed perfectly and beautifully. And it gave this. It it was one of those photographs that portrayed the feeling of the room as it as i remember it being as it was mm. which is and that comes across as somebody who's only seen the photograph that comes across that really does. yes you get you like, know what the energy was in that room yeah the hustle the bustle the this is an exciting election moment all that kind of stuff yeah. um and to me that like you that's that's and it didn't need to have been taken on the camera that good like it could have been done on a phone or anything like that probably like a decent phone ideally like a you know but and I think maybe the lens kind of helped, you know, it gave you the right 
uh, field of view and all that kind of stuff. But and it was luck as well, right? I'm not going to pretend that I I planned that. It was just I happened to be in the right place at the right time in the right circumstance. It was a little bit of planning, like you know, showing up is most of the work, right? And just being in yeah. the right place. I I haven't even like color corrected it or anything like that. Like I could color correct it, but. I don't know. It's got that orange glow of the orange light of the room at the time. Like it, it kind of is as it is. I think and you, are, I... you are, you are, very much describing like um, documentary slash reportage photo mm. photography, right? There, there is also, you know, just art photography. I, they overlap massively. They're mostly overlapped, but you yes. know, it, it, there is something like it doesn't have to be, you know, just a tree or whatever. If you capture it in a particular way, where the shapes just look really beautiful, really interesting, in the intersection mm. of this and that, like you know, just just shapes, really, right? Yes. Or you know, an emotional resonance or something like that. There is there's that kind of photography as well, which I think is it has value. It, uh, oh yeah, like and I'm, I'm certainly not well. I was going to say I'm not com like saying what does and doesn't have value, but there, <laughs> well, there are some things like. I, I think don't necessarily like the, the a, me a mediocre picture of a lake in a, in in the Lake District yeah. is is of no, no particular like you you for your memory fair enough I'm actually mm. I'm very anti photography for myself I mm. I like human memory I like how vague and and dishonest it is sometimes like I think that's very human and I like remembering things without the interference of photography it's easy for me to say because I'm not going anywhere but. I think I've always kind of felt that, and I, you know, you know that like semi mythical thing, you know, that tr tribes that believe that you know photography steals your soul. I kind of wish it were a little bit more like that, a little bit more mm -hmm. anti photography. Um, so I, I've I've popped a photo, my most recent photo that I quite like, into the chat. I see which, it. Yep. Yep. Which is. Uh, oh, so, I saw that on Master. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, so what happened? What happened there is I went to I was covering for the newspaper the proclamation of of King Charles the uh, Third. So this for for our non UK uh, friends, this is basically when the town crier in a silly outfit goes to a prominent place in every British small village, reads from a scroll, "Hear ye, hear ye, um, <laughs> we proclaim Charles the Third as King of." I, th I thought for a moment you were going to inform our international listeners that the Queen had died, like as if they <laughs> hadn't heard about it. <laughs> you might not um, have heard. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so I took this photograph, and the count. I took loads of photographs as part for for a, you know a spread on the paper, but this one photograph accidentally auto focused on <laughs> the backs of the heads of the front row of the crowd. And almost everyone in, not well, I say almost everyone, like a large segment of the crowd were filming this on their phones. And I think it, what's lovely is it's not that it's focused on their heads, it's it's focused on somebody taking a photo of what you were trying to take a photo of. I yeah, think that's exactly. what's lovely in that, or somebody recording it, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, like there were so many people there that were doing that recording yeah. it photographing it. it it was a whole line of people with phones being held up yeah, and yeah, yeah. i don't necessarily want to comment on whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing because whether or not if we lived in a world without smartphones maybe those people would still have been there and just watching it and maybe they wouldn't have i you know i it's not i couldn't say but it's interesting that we're there in person and still watching it through a screen like maybe that might say something uh, artful um um, maybe you know there's something to be said like you say about you liking the mystery of the the human memory uh, mm. and and that might be a time when that's lost for a lot of people um yeah it's i i just felt like it it, it captured the moment there so well that the the prominent thing in the room well in <laughs> the place was was that everyone held a phone up and i thought that was just like remarkable and i felt weirdly old-fashioned there with an old dslr camera and there's also a nice, there's a nice artistic irony that like you 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 you, you know you obviously you're intending to take a picture of this thing and you still have but on a screen like you still have yeah. a picture of the thing you wanted today i think that's quite that's kind of nice yeah and yeah so i think that's just like i yeah and I, it's it's just an interesting perspective on, on where yeah. i was at that yeah uh and yeah, I, I I love it really. It it just came out again. That one is not at all edited. 
um some you know like sometimes i'll tweak a little color here and there but like for the most part it's it's not the exact um it's it's like showing up is 90 percent of the of the work as far as i'm concerned right like it's the yeah sure the artistic stuff is great but if if we're doing an artistic -y photograph uh maybe drawing is better maybe there's a better medium for it yeah than than photography yeah i um, think so yeah yeah, I'm not like yeah. you know. Not, I'm not anti photography. I don't hate photography, but like I, I do think, like you say, it's uh, whether it's a problem or not that this pe many people record. I don't think it's a problem or not a problem. I think what it is, it's a waste of everybody's time. We, we don't need a million recordings of everything. <laughs> yeah. You're never gonna like the majority, like, like the ninety nine point nine 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 percent. They're never gonna look at these things ever again. Like exactly. And it might just be a generational thing. We have the ability to do this, and we're the first generation who's had the ability to do this, and we haven't. We don't have the maturity with it yet. I think we'll mm. come to realize that we don't need to photograph and video absolutely everything. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> we, we're gonna we're gonna get that at some point. Yeah, it, it was kind of surprising the number of people that were doing it. But yeah, like, and we're we're always growing as a society. We're always changing, and, yeah. and yeah. Um, it's new technology. But, it, we're, we're bound to you know be a bit over enthusiastic. For sure, for sure, and but also like with the Google services, uh, even though with Google Photos there is a file size limit, we do seem to live in this technological world where things are expected to be archived and, and not really ever deleted. That you can scroll back ten years on your phone and and see all that kind of stuff, which. I when I went through yeah like when I went through my photos I got rid of like so many still lives pictures of flowers that that I had long since forgotten and stopped caring about memories actually <laughs> interestingly enough that I did keep I kept almost every selfie with another person yeah um, yeah yeah I think they were like I and I kind of in a way think that those kind of selfies there is a profoundness to them um that there is a that's that's a moment in time that i think it 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 like it it aids the thing, that I, the thing to be clear the thing i was saying about memory is that mm. that is not I, that's not a moral judgment that's just a preference mm. i i'd yes. rather not have the selfies and rather have the vague memory if if you'd rather have the you know the interaction of memory and selfie then that's mm. that's totally cool it's not you know mm. it's not but the you know. the 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 selfie itself like it i i find that it aids that memory right like it, yeah. it aids that yeah. fuzziness right like it just it just takes you back there for a moment and then the rest of it is on you uh, funnily yeah. enough actually i think like you and my dad are probably of the same mindset i um when my sister got married i videoed the the thing and and i edited the video and i was really happy with how it came out and my dad can't watch it uh he just like he he has this uh, like memory of it of being there that yeah. He, yeah. he has no interest whatsoever in ever doesn't want like photos yeah. yes because it, it kind of like your brain is doing a lot of the work there with the photos yeah, yeah, yeah. but when it comes to video that's interesting it's too, yeah no, that's cool yeah it's too too real it's too like yeah it's too stark um, i think it's yeah. too it's not how you remember it, you know, like say memory is hazy and, and fuzzy and warm and, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, 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 and the stark, perfect, crisp video is not like that. No. It, and, it, it um, almost, it, it, it intrudes. <laughs> yes. It reminds me of a, an expression. I've, I can't remember where I heard it. I'm sure it was by a famous writer or something, which is, um, you'll forget what people say, but you'll never forget how they made you feel. No, was it? Yeah, mm. something like, oh, people will forget what you say, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. I'm like that because my, my short-term memory is so fucking, so appalling. Um, like when I'm trying, I'm, I'm, there's, there's a game that I love and I'm trying to describe it to somebody and I've forgotten, I remember how it made me feel, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm halfway between trying to describe the game, realizing I can't remember like how that works, how this works or, but I, I remember how it made me feel and I hope that I can communicate that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. So I think with, with, with photographs, um, yeah. And particularly with self, like selfies of just yourself is just it's a bit weird to keep a collection of those right <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah with people with friends with family all that kind of stuff i look back on them and i i like i enjoyed them it was it was it was interesting to see what i kept and and, and what stayed behind yeah yeah i think it's an um, interesting process yeah what yeah. what because at the time you have no idea right but then looking mm. back years later certain things have value and certain things don't right 
Yeah. And, and, and events uh, as well. They like not necessarily events that I, I that were personally important to me uh, there's there's a stack here that i i took for the the paper that i think are like they came out nice like they are a nice record a record isn't necessarily the the right thing because like even when we do news reports we're not really taking a a a, a beat by beat record mm -hmm. we, you know yeah. again we're trying to describe the vibe the feeling the yeah uh, the way I think of it is like, what would you say if you were describing it to someone over a pint or something like that, right? Like it's yeah, yeah. you're um, painting a picture, paint, oh, painting a picture, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, no, I cut down a lot, and I actually very much prefer the folder hierarchy. It's not much of a hierarchy; like it's I've got a folder <laughs> yeah. called pictures, and then all of the all of it's in albums, um, or folders. Um, but I noticed how much junk there was in the Google Photos timeline, and that obscured so much of the, the the quality stuff. Like the quality stuff was on the same hierarchical level as the junk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a lot of things. For example, I took a photo of a receipt to claim back on expenses or something like that. That was on the same same level of hierarchy as as you know a, a holiday with friends from like five years ago. That's a very fond memory. You know, like it's. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I do like the idea of of categorizing and sorting things, but we don't. I know we don't like necessarily live in that world anymore. I know that people like people are. Um, I don't know. I well, it's done, like, it's done. When I'm seeing a friend interacting with uh, app, whatever Apple Photos thing is called, mm -hmm. like you, she'll pull up like just a picture of herself in a particular situation, and it'll be like. And then you know, Apple Photos is like here are here are all the other pictures of you in that kind of situation. You know, it's it's algorithmically deciding what is similar, which is kind of cool and impressive, but it is it's a very different it's a very different way of looking at things. And there's a tension there, and it would be nice to be able to pick and choose which you know I don't know I don't know what I'm saying really other than it, this yeah. is one of the things we're going to have to deal with in the going yes. into the future, right? You know what I mean? Like yeah. Well, Google Photos is a bit like that. Like you can literally search for things that have no metadata. You can search trees or yeah, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, Christmas. Yeah, and I, we, like. you know, we're going to have to decide what parts of our library we want organising by AI and and and. Oh, I said there was an interesting post on Macedon the other day about mm -hmm. the kind of attacks you can do on AI, mm -hmm. and uh, the example was like an ordering attack. So this is this is an AI that's trained. Um, uh, there, there, it's an AI, the purpose of which is to decide whether people, whether somebody should have a loan or not. And, and the point of using AI for stuff like this is that we don't know what it's doing, but it's looking at things that the humans would never think of. And because they correlate, it's making the best decisions in theory, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but AI needs to be trained. And this attack involves um, uh, you, you, so you, the first 10 candidates you show it uh, are women who shouldn't be given loans. And then the AI, AI decides that women shouldn't be given loans, right? <laughs> so we've got to be very careful with these things. Yeah, that's yeah, that is kind of interesting. It's like um, the uh, the the correlation of the rise in radio is like uh, inversely parallel to the amount of violent crime. <laughs> yeah, like, does yeah, that yeah. mean that more people owning radios means that less people are violent? Yeah, you know, and things things like that. Yeah, it's. Um, Mm, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, a lot of interesting AI attacks happen that way. AI, AI is going to be hugely involved in in you know. Like, I mean, obviously, people are training it to decide whether people deserve loans or not, for starters, which is scary. Mm. But you know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not anti technologist. You know, I'm sure mm. so long as it's well trained and so long as it's supervised, it's going to be better at a lot of things, and that's fine. That's cool. Mm. We should absolutely use technology when it benefits us, but we should think about. We should well. I'll just I'll just say the one thing we should think about who's in control of it. <laughs> That's yeah. important. Who is it serving yeah. for? What purpose? And also, like, are we gonna like are we gonna become dependent on on an opaque algorithm? Yeah, I, I I'm not as worried about that as some people are. We've but we're quite dependent on you know a lot of things alg that are algorithmic at the moment, right? Like, I mean, even just yeah. a search engine. 
And we're also, you know, many of the technologies that I use are opaque to me. I mean, I guess the point there is they're not. There's somebody to whom they're not opaque. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. We we've got to be careful with technology, but we've also got to be careful of being scared of technology. We are mm. we are a, a cybernetic race. You know, since since the first human picked up a stick and used it as a tool, we are cybernetic, right? We are yeah. tool using, technology based species and we can't be afraid of that that's our nature no and, and we we also can't push back the tide as well like we can't yeah. like there, there is going to be technology that's like, the smartphone for example like and i'd be interested actually if there's anyone uh watching this first of all this far in well done um yeah. <laughs> but also like i i feel that at this stage now smartphones are not an optional technology or or at the very or we're approaching such a time i think the the covid passports were, were very cl like close to it where yeah like there there was stuff that in reality you could only do on online or on the covid app yep. Uh, yep, there yep, are yep. also going to be things with when it comes to banking for example um if, if if you're not near a post office, the only way to pay in a check is to take a photograph of it on the, on your banking app um, to I verify your didn't identity. Know, didn't you're know that need... was a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um... Although I think that's more an argument against checks than for. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but point, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, che checks are on the way out, but there are some things yeah. like um, certain bank accounts for like if you if you like village hall bank accounts and things like that where they just yeah, don't yeah. get don't get updated in forever and and you know i it's, it's rare that i come across checks these days but on on occasion i see you know i see them um but it's usually yeah like it's usually expenses for a village fate or something like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah um but yeah and also like verifying your i'm sure there's something i had to verify my identity for that uh, I need a phone for, um, where you, you know take a photo of your face and then they use the algorithms to match up your eyes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's definitely becoming more common. So, you know, yeah, I like I don't like yeah. I mean, I don't like it, but also I can't change it. Well, uh, I mean, what I don't like is it's you know it's controlled by corporations who are serving yeah. capital. That's my problem with it. But I don't think that should um, translate to hating the technology. For sure, you can for question sure. you know you can question things about it, question its use, question who's in control. Without, I mean, some some technology will be questionable. I'm not saying technology is inherently great, but you know, like yeah, separate separate those separate the structural from the technological, and and yeah. But, yeah. And then hopefully, you know, get this stuff in public hands more. That would be great. That'd be nice. Um, and I, I think that when, like, uh, in ideal circumstances, op you know, where, where technology can be replicated in an open source, free software yeah. matter, I think I think that that that's where you you get the best of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's nuanced as well, right? Like, there's going to be yeah, like there's. It, you know, it, it'd be nice to blanket things. It feels good to make general, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. general generalizations and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're uh, you know we're, we're two white men in, in a white man's world, right? Like, it, it, yep. there are going to be things like I I'm not you know scared of of the you know necessarily having my data used against me, but that's not to say. Well, that's not to say who knows what the future holds, but also that's not necessarily to say that's that's applicable for for yeah 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 no of course know, yeah you know like a gay person in Egypt for example yep you know it's uh, so hmm, yeah uh right should we should we wrap should we should we wrap up the podcast because we've, we've yeah I've got a well. quick one before we do this is just something sure. there's um I know I know you've uh, interacted with this person as well. Uh, to me, a new a new YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, I've got the name here. I've forgotten it off the top of my head. Uh, where are we? Uh, Ver Veronica, Veronica explains. Oh yes, I know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're new on you. I think they're fairly new on YouTube, but they popped up in. They started popping up on my YouTube, and then I noticed them on Mastodon, and uh, she's kind of come out of nowhere. But like great videos. Yes. Fully agree. So, just, 
Yep, it's uh, Veronica Explains on YouTube. They're also on Mastodon. They're also, videos are also on Peertube. Uh, I'm not going to give you all the blah blahs, but yeah, re- really good. More, not, less like your style, like more scripted, more definitely mm. more um, prepared. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Her latest, her latest video is uh, she's using a Model M and doing some really clever stuff with it, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, just a recommendation. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, and I second that recommendation. Um, yeah, and and it, yeah, actually, yeah. I I mean, is Veronica explains new? I don't know. It's not that I new to it, me. Yeah, certainly new to me. Uh, new new to the Fediverse as well. But yeah, but the quality of videos is so good. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm looking at the videos now. Where's when when was there? Uh, a year ago, yeah. So they're like okay. fairly, fairly new, but been going a while. So, yeah. But yeah, so the, the videos are they, the they've got that charm, you know, that works yeah. without without being too like like what's the word like sleazy YouTube. You know, I don't want that, mm. but I do want like a bit of charm and a bit of wit and a bit of you know like actually caring about the videos. The opposite of you know anything I've ever made. Um, <laughs> Yeah, re- really good, really insightful, well prepared, well, well, really well researched to the point mm. where, <laughs> I mean, she's a woman making YouTube videos about technology, right? So she gets problems mm. with men either thinking like a man has written the script for her or, you know, any of that nonsense. Um, to the point where she caveats every single thing she says in the video, <laughs> like, I know that this isn't the case, don't comment about this, and like, mm. which is awful for her, I'm sure, but. But the videos are great. That's yeah. mm, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, I, I'm probably not going to add like various links into the 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 uh, podcast notes onto this kind of thing. In uh, as a general rule, going back to the, we don't want to end up making this whole podcast work and effort and stuff. Like I mean, that. R- seriously, you so, go to YouTube and search for Veronica yeah. explains. <laughs> It's, it's normal, need. yeah. Um, but if that you're also is going to go for two hundred years yeah. time, and YouTube doesn't exist anymore. I guess tough luck, tough luck. Um, but yeah, so but like you've you know the yeah. I don't know. I feel like I should just preface that in like set, was it start as you mean to go on? Like <laughs> yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, did did we say this before? I don't know if this was recorded at the beginning or whether or not we said it before, <laughs> but. I think we have said it on this podcast again, so I think I'm doing that thing where I go over stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse when I do it's a few takes charm, of Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, someone did say I, I go over myself a few times, but when I'm doing like a <laughs> one-hit, like casual kind of thing, I kind of want to make sure everything's covered. Um, <laughs> what was it? What was the thing? Uh, the thing was, um, podcasts, even though they often seem like two people just in a room having a chat, they <laughs> often end up being a lot more work than... Uh, they look like. Uh, however, uh, neither me or Drew are signing on for work, so these, this is going to literally be authentic. And as a result of that, expect maybe some rough edges and such. Um, but you know, it's genuine authenticity, and that might not always necessarily be as I don't know <laughs> smooth, smooth as it's supposed to be. I mean, I might, I might leave in that bit where I did the advert for the Fediverse. I'm supposed to buy some vague amorphous <laughs> 10 year old keep that Absolutely keep that in. It's great. <laughs> well, cool. It's better, All right. So. About NordVPN. <laughs> NordVPN. Oh, uh, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. What are the others? You that shaving know. one. What's the shaving one? Oh, um, Dollar Shave Club. This is all right. Wix. Yeah. Your Wix. Wix, you can make a website. I, I always feel like a, a channel has hit rock bottom when they do Raid Shadow Legends. It feels like they're, <laughs> yeah. they're the ones that will sponsor anyone. So, like, oh, yeah. You, you've yeah, been cancelled for being a racist? Well, I'm sure Raid Shadow Legends will still <laughs> give you some money. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would have... There, there was, a, like, I, I on occasion consider actually playing Raid Shadow Legends to see if it's as bad as it looks, but I don't want that on my phone. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... it's it looks it looks terrible, but it also looks dodgy. Like yeah, no, it it does. It looks like it's farming, mining bitcoins in the background, or it, yeah. stealing your credit card. Or some, it's doing something. That's mm. probably we probably libeled it, slandered it, or whatever you do to products. Mm. I, I assume we're uh, a pretty uh, anti 
NFT crypto kind of podcast, right? Is that? Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't like them. They're if you're listening it. to this and you're pro NFT or maybe even pro crypto, like, I don't want you listening. Go yeah. away. I, um, yeah, go. Yeah. But <laughs> after listening for, uh, <laughs> two hours, two hours. I actually I quite like I put some of my photographs on Mastodon.art on a separate account and um they've taken a stance against NFTs. It's like NFTs is part of like Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's, I think it's, anybody's it's sensible of... is, right? Yeah. Anyway, end it, Chris. We're gonna walk okay. on forever. Yeah, yeah, end it. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Drew, for joining me. Thank you, me, for joining me. And um <laughs> if you've got any feedback, questions, all that kind of stuff, uh best place to get us is on the Fediverse. Um because that's yeah, that's where we be. And um Ahara mateys? Is that is that yeah? <laughs> 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 Thank you.